trade market was busy in the NHL yesterday, and the Rangers were the busiest. They made several deals, and a couple of big ones. Familiar names are no longer wearing the Rangers blue. Now come new names to become acquainted to. Live from the Olympic Saddle Dome in Calgary, it's the New York Rangers and the Calgary Flames. Hello, everyone. Welcome to New York Rangers Hockey. Sam Rose along with John Davidson. McTavish is 14, Noonan is 16. He's been learning the well, new numbers well, of all Anderson the players. Was 39, that's right. No, no, 36. 36, okay. <laughs> what a shake-up. What that a really change is. in the look of this team. Well, you lose quality people to gain quality people, and the Rangers have found themselves in a position, if you look at the top two names on the left, Amante and Gartner, they were the main players playing for the Rangers. And on the right, all four are going to step in, and all four are going to play primary roles. And I think because of that, the Rangers are a little bigger, they're a little grittier, and they're, uh, to me, a better playoff team going into the playoff or the stretch prior to the playoffs. It's tough to go through trades like this when you lose real good people like Tony Amante and Mike Gardner. But if it, it's business, and in my opinion, the Rangers should be a better playoff team. Mike Canyon certainly thinks so. He, so he got two players from Chicago who he knows very well in Stefan Matteau, a big left winger, and Brian Noonan. Matteau's a good skater. He reads plays well. He's a very physical player at times. He's uh, good along the boards, and Mike Keenan talked about how he reads plays along the boards. Here he gets away from Jeff Bukaboom, then he works the boards to set up his teammates, and this was a game last week against the Rangers, the original one there's against Detroit. He can score too, Sam. The Rangers are glad to get Mateau, and Brian Noonan, they find a player that can play along the boards. He can play the point on the power play. He can kill penalties, and he's very shifty when he gets the puck, and he's got pretty good hands. You'll see it here. Deals around people, gets through people, and slides the puck in behind Mike Richter. So the Rangers are very happy in getting those, player, those players, and Mike Keenan simply knows them. He knows and he can trust them. Noonan wears number 16. Matteau will wear number 32. And I guess there's a bit of a wash here. One Massachusetts player leaves in Tony Amante. Another one comes in Brian Noonan. Now, there was a trade of star players, veteran star players. Mike Gartner goes for Glenn Anderson, who's an owner of five Stanley Cup rings. No, the numbers are very similar. The cup winning years certainly do make a difference, and Anderson has built up your reputation over the years of, as being a very, very solid playoff player. Now, let's not kid ourselves. We lose a very good player in Mike Gartner, but the Rangers felt that, uh, you know, Mike Gartner and Mike Keenan, they had a difference of opinion on how the game was played at certain times, so it's better to let Mike go to a great city in Toronto and play for a very good hockey team, and I think he'll be excited going there, even though he'll miss New York. And, and for the Rangers, they get a guy that's won, and he's, and he's played in the playoffs, and they're happy with that. And don't underestimate the acquisition of 35-year-old Craig McTavish, an excellent centerman, and right now the Rangers need some depth at center. Well, the key to me is, for the first time since Mike Keenan's been here, you're going to see them build a, a, a defensive line, a line that'll go up against the other team's best lines, and the Rangers haven't had that all season. Along with that, and I was trying to think about it today, and it might be the first time since the Rangers had Walter Kachuk and Phil Esposito might be the first time they've had a guy that can actually go out and win face-offs all the time. They've tried many different people, but these people aren't, have never been noted as real key face-off guys. Craig McTavish is. He's a quality player, Sam. So Mike Keenan will have four new players in the lineup that he has to get familiar with. And earlier this evening, I asked him how he plans to use the new players. Well, it was really a great acquisition by Neil Smith and the fact that we have three regular players out of the lineup uh, in Messier, Nimchinov, and Hudson, so there won't be any problem getting the additional uh, people in the lineup. Uh, Craig will play, uh, McTavish will play center, Noonan, Matteau, left and right wing, and uh, um, we feel that uh, those people uh, will certainly uh, bring a lot to, to our uh, checking game, and uh, Anderson's going to play right wing with uh, Tikkanen tonight and Graves, so uh, he also has that speed back up front, and uh, it's a good combination for us right now in, in view of the fact we have such a sh shortage of players. Time to get acquainted with the new-look Rangers as they take on the Calgary Flames. We'll be back in just a moment. the 
Olympic Saddle Dome in Calgary. Second meeting of the season between these two teams. The Flames won in New York 4-1 in January. Mike Richter makes his fourth consecutive start. He still leads the league with 34 wins. He is fifth in goals against average at 2.63. He's coming off a game in which he had a tough game in the loss to Chicago, but he's had a couple of days to practice here in Calgary, and he says he feels a lot better. Mike Vernon is riding a four-game winning streak. He has won 22 games, and despite trade rumors throughout the season, he is still a Calgary Flame and the man they are counting on to lead them into the playoffs. Right, Calgary used, have used five different goaltenders throughout this season. Mike did miss some time with an injury. However, he is, in my opinion, by far their number one guy. Mark Fawcett, the referee, Sweet Docks, and Lyle Seitz are the linesmen. The Rangers have 20 road wins, 24 and 1. Those 20 wins are tied for second most in the NHL and tied for the most with Washington and Buffalo in the Eastern Conference. Wearing the seat tonight in the absence of Mark Messier and as best as I can remember, the first time as a New York Ranger he's worn the seat, Brian Leach, some excess water being squeegeed around. Adam Graves and Kevin Lowe will wear the A as the alternate captains, and you see the excess water being moved around. The Calgary Flames, one of the best home teams in the NHL, in fact, the best in the Western Conference, or at least with the most wins, uh, excuse me, they are tied in the Western Conference with 21 home wins. You know, what Calgary's done very well in the season, Sam, is they have beaten the teams that they should have beaten. And they've done a good job with that. This is a team that's improved itself through some trades. And they are not going to, in this game, as we look at Glenn Anderson, we should mention right off the top, Mark Messier is not playing because of his leg injury. May play tomorrow in Edmonton. Yeah. And Calgary's without Neuendijk with a bad knee that he's coming back from. He's been out over a month now. And the other is Gary Roberts is not playing. So three marquee players, two of them with Calgary, not in the lineup. And Neuendijk will be out at least another couple yeah. of weeks before he starts skating. He said he hopes to get in a couple of games before the playoffs. And there is a familiar face, James Patrick, who the Rangers traded to Hartford and the Whalers 10 days ago, traded him to the Calgary Flames in a major deal. Yeah, we'll see Patrick, and we'll see Kelly Kissio in the lineup tonight, so some ex-Ranger flavor going against the Michelle Rangers. Michelle Petit. Michelle Petit is in the lineup, correct. Quite a lot of excess water here is... It is not really a warm day here yeah. in Calgary, I can tell you that. It's oh, snow, snow most of the day, uh, yes. But a delay here. How was the skiing? I know... Uh, can you imagine, here's a guy that a week ago was on the beach in Florida. <laughs> Yesterday's on the ski slopes Whoa. in Panorama. You know, it's still gravity, Sam. Gravity gets to me. Get down to the bottom real quick. Yeah, and the, the licorice that yeah. Gary Roberts is trying to give to you is getting to you also. No, 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 I'm staying away from that these days. Craig McTavish, the last player in the National Hockey League to play without a helmet. You know, it was very interesting. One thing you talk about when you make a trade of this caliber or of this magnitude is how the chemistry would be. And... You talk about whether the chemistry will be affected. The Rangers lose some real good people as far as people go and some quality hockey players. But the Rangers, they know most of the Edmonton players because of the ex-Edmonton players already with the Rangers. Keenan and others like Larmer, and, and even though Mike Hudson's not here, they know the Chicago guys. And the morale was very high this morning at practice. They had a lot of fun together out there. So. Craig McTavish, it'll be strange tomorrow night. He'll be going back to Edmonton yeah. to play his former team, right. having spent nine years and he's in Edmonton. With absolutely the respected in a very, very high fashion. Looking in, at the Edmonton paper today, Edmonton, big yeah. banner headline that says, Thanks, Mac T. Here are the Rangers lineups tonight. See McTavish in. He'll wear number 14. Brian Noonan, number 16. Stefan Matteau, number 32. And back after missing 24 games with a broken thumb and having thumb surgery is Eddie Olchek. Rangers with Tikkanen, Glenn Anderson, and Adam Graves, Brian Leach, and Jeff Bukaboom. Joel Otto, number 29. Ronnie Stern, number 22. And Mike Sullivan, number 32. One-time Rangers draft pick. Mike Sullivan takes a hit from Adam Graves. On defense, James Patrick, number six, and Zarley Zalapski, number 33. Zalapski came Boy, Otto and Tikkanen, and Sam. Baby, did they grind it, and Tikkanen put his elbow right into Otto's face. Tikkanen finds the puck. Tikkanen uh, went home to Edmonton to visit his family and flew in this morning. Good hit by Bukaboom, knocked down Mike Sullivan. Otto goes after Bukaboom after he released the puck. Puck around the boards in the Calgary zone. Flames have won four of their last five. Just coming back from a road trip, and uh, Otto going after Tikkanen. See what happened there was Otto wanted to bump Leach. When the puck was in the Calgary bench and the whistle sounded, Otto was coming across to hit Leach. Tikkanen picked him off. So we're already seeing something that may be festering here, and something that was 
quite a battle over the years. Essa Tikkanen and Joel Otto. A lot of times, Sam, it was Marc Messier opposite Joel Otto all those years when Edmonton played Calgary. But Otto with an aggressive shift and Tikkanen with an aggressive shift to start the game. And then Graves came in from behind, sure. gave Otto a facial. Uh, well, Otto, Otto didn't appreciate it. Otto was part of some trade talk regarding the Rangers. Mm -hmm. Only the Flames wanted too much in return. Watch Tikkanen's elbow right there. Boom. Tikkanen always has the arms up and he knows the other player is going to get near him. And you protect yourself. Tikkanen and Otto given minors here, so the teams will be at even strength. Both given roughing penalties. At 49 seconds, the team will skate four aside. That was a good road shift that the Rangers started with Anderson and Buka Boom hitting and Tikkanen and Graves bumping. A good, smart first shift on the road. Dave King, the head coach of the Calgary Flames, his team in first place most of the season in the Pacific Division, and they would be seated number two in the Western Conference. Rangers, we should mention, have officially made the playoffs. They're in the playoffs. They have clinched the berth. Yes. Kovalov on the ice playing center here. Four on four action. He had that major rescinded that he was given. Good news in Chicago. It shouldn't even have been a minor, let alone a major. Dan Kesmer's shot went wide. Kevin Lowe back in the lineup. Paired with Sergei Zubov, Kovalov, and Larmer. You'll see a lot of that pair as Mike Keenan wants to play them together and wants to continue using Kovalov at center. He really likes the way he's played there. Theo Fleury, number 14, fires it out. Al McInnes turns and shoots. Score! And in off Richter. Long shot. McInnes with the drive. It may have been tipped. Well, it's a situation where McInnes, who has one of the hardest shots, but he also gets it off so quickly. Watch. The Rangers have three men over the over the uh, defensive line there. McInnes shoots, turns, and fires. And it just simply beat Richter as Blurry provided the screen. Sam, Al McInnes is on fire. He had six points in his last game. A goal of five assists in Toronto. And he starts it here with a goal. Not only does he have one of the hardest shots in the business, but McKinnis to get it away quicker than most defensemen. And he had to do a full spinorama on that play. And Al McKinnis coming into the game in third place among defensemen and points scored with 73. Now adds to that 74. He leads all defensemen in goals scored. That is his 24th of the season. So the Flames take the early lead. Skating four aside, McKinnis scores. Richter knocks that one away into the corner. Reichel sending it out to McKinnis. Reichel has been red hot. McKinnis checked by Graves. Off the stick of Reichel, he turns. Bukaboom checks him. Gary Roberts scored 11 goals in his last 11 games. 20, 22 points in his last 11 games. He didn't want to sit out yeah. there. Hurt his thumb, slashed in the game against oh, Toronto. Two-line pass was whistled. He blocked the shot. It hit oh. underneath his, uh, the protection well, on, his, on his thumb. He's, his thumb is fractured seven different players below the knuckle you know, on his thumb. Can you imagine that? And he wanted to play, but he can't with this one. McKinnis got the goal, his 24th from Fleury, and Reichel at 128 as you look at the Rangers bench. Steve Larmer talking to Glenn Anderson and Adam Graves. We played a little over two minutes. Teams are still skating four aside. And Craig McTavish out to take his first time, ice time as a New York Ranger with Brian Noonan on the right side. Noonan number 16, McTavish number 14. Lowen and Zuboff on defense. Watch McTavish in this game winning draws. He won that one rather cleanly. By the way, four on four goals. The Rangers have scored 10 on the season. They've now given up nine with that Calgary goal. Noonan feels back there. Montitoff, number 13, and Michael Nylander, number 92 on for Calgary. Nylander coming over in a big trade involving Hartford and Calgary. And while Doug Reisbrow looked around for another forward yesterday, he didn't come up with a deal, and uh, his big trade was made 10 days ago. Here's Noonan across the line, leaving it for low. McTavish going to the net. The puck around the boards, played by Zalapsky. McTavish on him. Puck sliding out of the zone. Taken in there to play it. Taken in, moving against Paul Cruz, number 12. The team was picked off at the line oh, by he, McTavish. You know, he picked McTavish off. That's why there was an offside. McTavish battles back now. See, the Calgary blue line, McTavish tried to hold up, and Petit pushed him offside. That's why the stoppage, and you see the blood boil a little bit again. Rangers have not, I don't think, had a shot on goal. Calgary's only had the one. See, there's McTavish stopped, and there he's pushed offside by Petit. 
But I also thought that McTavish tried to pick the oh. tee from getting to taking it. Watch McTavish with mm. the draw. Lift the stick of Nylander, kick the puck back. I think we'll see a lot of McTavish using different ways of winning the faceoff. And you're right, maybe it was McTavish trying to push the tee as he was chasing Tikkanen with a puck. And However, McTavish I know that McTavish was pushed off. offside. Yeah. It was an offside whistle. There's been only one shot on goal. That went in the net by Al McInnes. Penalty again, and it's a more four-on-four. Four. Kelly Kissio gets on the ice. He's wearing a shield because he's coming off an injury where he fractured a cheekbone. And he's coming back tonight for the first time. So on sportsmanlike conduct to McTavish and Petit, two minutes apiece at 3.01 of this first period. Now, again, McInnes is on the ice. Again, be careful. With all this open ice and the way he shoots the puck, watch out. And now Matteau seeing his first ice time. The Rangers now have three forwards on. No, Karpovsev is on, excuse me, with Wells. Larmer broke his stick and goes back to get another one. Larmer and Matteau, teammates in Chicago, are now teamed here in the, with the Rangers. Matteau wearing number 32. Kessio number 11 with Fleury number, number 14. McKinnis number two and Dan Kesmer number 39 for Calgary. Vernon plays the puck for Fleury. Fleury is knocked down. Matteau trying to take the puck away. McKinnis moves it out of the zone. Team skating four aside. For the second time, Wells comes in with Larmer. Kesmer knocked it away. Out for Fleury, and he's knocked down by Kovalov. Wells has the puck. Larmer against Kesmer. Kovalov heads for the net. Now goes into the corner to get the puck. Kovalov looking for Leach. Take it off the boards by Theo Fleury. Calgary's yeah, been good through the first four minutes here. Not giving the Rangers any type of offensive scoring chances. They've been pretty good at their own blue line. James Patrick has come back on. Nice. Whistle stops play. 15.45 to go. First period. Flames have a one nothing lead. Rangers breathed a sigh of relief on Saturday when Brian Burke reviewed the tape of this incident from Friday night's game and said, no, this should not have been a game misconduct to Alexei Kovalev. No, it shouldn't even have been a minor penalty. And Andy Van Helleman made the call. I still, I still believe Andy is right at the top of the list as far as referees go. We had the benefit of the replay. I, I, and, uh, and Brian Burke certainly saw it the way that we saw. It shouldn't even have been a minor. Patrick gets the shot off save made by Richter. Leach has the puck. 28 seconds to go in the four-on-four. Four. Kovalov trying to move past the laps. He couldn't do it. Graves has Reichel take the puck. Reichel slides it across. West Wall shoots off the left arm of Richter and off the glass. Zalapski moving with a puck. Whoa, he's run into by Bukaboom. And Bukaboom's on top of the puck. The whistle stops play. You can see Calgary playing a very opportunistic type first period here. They're making sure they're not giving the Rangers any chance offensively, and then they're countering with whatever they can. This is a great pass across. Look at that trapping three Rangers to Waltz, and his high shot went over the bar, over the crossbar. Reichel has been pretty good, Sam, as you mentioned oh, earlier, man. with his scoring, and he's gotten assist already in this game, 80 points to lead the team. And, of course, we know the Flames were having a great season with both Gary Roberts and Joe Newendike leading them with the scoring. Reichel with, with a hat-trick. With injuries. Sorry, John, a hat-trick for him in the game against Toronto that ended the three-game road trip. It began with a win in Tampa, a loss at Florida, and then the win in Toronto. Taking in an auto. <laughs> it's going to oh. be fun to watch. Glenn Anderson is on, number 36. Anderson finds the puck, finds the net, and a save by Vernon. There's a first scoring chance for the Rangers. Anderson beat Yanni, getting through. Started with the Rangers moving up ice. Moving up ice, five on five. They back Calgary in. You see Zuboff on the puck, backing Calgary in. Now watch Anderson break through the middle and beat Yanni. Good move, but Mike Vernon makes a fine save, just backing in, trying to work with... Glenn Anderson, look at Anderson trailing behind. Now go to the right side and just absolutely undress Yanni. And Vernon is a goaltender who is very patient. He waited for Anderson's first shot and made a good save on Glenn Anderson. Mike Vernon with wins over Florida here in Calgary. A shutout over San Jose. And a win in Tampa and a win at Toronto for that four-game win streak. 22 wins on the season. The penalty upcoming. Taken and picked off. Otto maybe giving Otto a Charlie horse well away from the puck. 
And he'll get the penalty for kneeing or interference. Not thinking and going at Otto, and this time it's going to cost him. Play is still alive. Now the whistle stops playing. A power play coming up for the Flames. Yeah, Tegan and skates right to the box. He knows that he got caught. It's either a knee or a trip. Yeah, it's, it's a knee, it looks like. Yeah, he put his knee right out. Otto may have a little trouble with that. He was flexing his leg. As he, uh, I think, was surprised more than anything else. There's Otto. The puck's gone by him. And you see the late hit and knee on knee. And that's, uh, that's a tough play to deal with for a player, putting your knee out like this. Yeah, maybe it was hip. Yeah, but it, was, it could have been called interference more than kneeing when you see that replay. I mean, he seemed to pull a knee in and then put his hip out, so Otto caught the, the side of Tikkanen, but Otto missed the puck, and Tikkanen hit him late. It's definitely a penalty, but I don't know if kneeing was the right call. 14.29 to go in the first period. Flames with a 1-0 lead. Tikkanen for kneeing at 5.31. And watch Al McKinnis. Power play time. Flames were 3 for 5 in Toronto on the power play. They are fifth in the NHL. And very, very dangerous. McKinnis with the big shot. Reichel had two power play goals in the game at Toronto, and Fleury had one. And McKinnis makes, gets most of his points, Sam, with the shot. Either off a rebound, he'll get an assist, or beat the goaltender for the goal. He's not, not the great passing defenseman, but what a shot. Good job by Kukaboom as he rode down German Titov. Nice save by Richter. Nylander with the puck, number 92. McKinnis and Zalapsky play the points. Nylander playing it to German Titov, number 13, along with Theo Fleury, number 14. Rangers have Graves and Anderson, Leach and Kukaboom, and Graves able to clear. See how patient Nylander was, almost too patient, but the Rangers in watching that, have to study him and not get trapped because he's patient with the puck. And now Stefan Matteau has come on as a penalty killer with Steve Larmer, Sergei Zuboff, and Kevin Lowe. And Richter in trouble with the puck. Titoff gets to it. One minute to go on the power play. Nylander checked by Zuboff. Lowe with a hit on Flurry. Nylander moving with the puck. Nylander drops it off for Flurry. Titoff set up in front, off the stick of McKinnis and out of the zone. Matteau finds the puck. Able to clear the Calgary line. McKinnis has it back. Robert Reichel has come on, along with Kelly Kissio. Zuboff has the puck. Craig McTavish now on for the Rangers. Kissio intercepts in center with 30 seconds to go on the power play. McTavish takes down Kissio. Zuboff digging for the puck. Able to work it down. One shot so far, and that was the McKinnis shot from the point that Richter here to side. Now McKinnis has been on for the entire power play. The puck tipped ahead by Reichel, but this will be an icing on the flame. No, it was waved off. And driven out of the zone by Jay Wells. Sent in by Dan Kesmer. Around the boards. Final seconds of kicking his penalty. Drop pass to Petit. Shank the shot wide. Wells has the puck. Knocked down by Petit. Teams are at full strength. Kissio behind the net. Kissio for Reichel. Saved by Richter. And Karpovsev out with it. Tikkanen moves in on Petit. Nice move. He's pulled down. That's a penalty on Michelle Petit. Rangers, Rangers doing get a, a power play. Doing a one-on-one. -on -one. Anderson had a scoring chance one-on-one -on -one with Yanni. And here Petit gets beat one-on-one -on -one by Tikkanen. Rangers power play when we come back. Here's what happened on the play, John. And Tikkanen isos right there. Petit beats him to the inside. You can see the stick through the legs twisting him around taking away the scoring chance. So the Rangers have their first power play. 419th time. Now here's Craig McTavish earlier. Watch little, little things and looking up the clock. He's killing the penalty. Mm -hmm. Has to know what he should do, where he should go. Back time management. Moment. Live action. Zuboff shoots. He scores! And it was tipped in front by Glenn Anderson who will get his first goal as a New York Ranger. It's a power play goal, and the game is tied. What's interesting is during the stoppage, Anderson was holding court in front of the Rangers bench. Maybe trying to figure out where he was going to go, how he was going to work the power play. They haven't practiced together. Anderson's in front. There you see the deflection before the puck got to Adam Graves. Anderson cruised in, and Zuboff with a smart, low, good shot in front. We're tied at one. Glenn Anderson gets his 18th as first as a Ranger. And you can hear the reaction. The Calgary <laughs> fans know Glenn Anderson very, very well from his 11 years as an Edmonton Oiler. Anderson, his, his debut as a Ranger, gets his first as a Ranger, 18th of the season. Rangers get their league-leading 85th power play goal. They are second in the league in percentage. And the game is tied around the boards. I guess that little huddle, John, in front of the bench during the uh, 
TV timeout helped Glenn Anderson. Huh? He knew what to, where to go. Well, you know, they just wanted to discuss how they were going to probably try and keep it simple, keep the puck down. He cruised through the slot, see what he can do. May as well talk and have good communication, Sam. Zuboff, by the way, gets a point. He's second behind Ray Bork as far as scoring, scoring goes amongst defensemen. That's a 76 point. Bork has 88. Today, Zuboff had his eight-game point scoring streak stopped Friday night against Chicago. Sandy McCarthy, big, tough swinger. Number 15 fires in. He goes about 225. I thought he was a football player today when I saw him after practice. He yeah. is upper body-wise absolutely huge. Rangers have McTavish with Noonan and Gilbert. Gilbert number 17. Noonan number 16. McTavish number 14. The puck up for the air bounces down in the corner. McCarthy reverses, takes a bump. Charlie Zalapski moves it out to Paul Cruz. Cruz number 12. On with German Titoff. Titoff just tackled Zuboff in center ice. Low with the hit on McCarthy as they battle for the loose puck. Titoff has it. Sends it back to James Patrick. He shoots. Saved by Richter. The rebound. Low knocked down Titoff. And you hear the fans respond. I think they wanted a cross-checking penalty. Zalapski's got it. Puck knocked down by Koser on for his first shift. Kiprios with Koser and Eddie Olchek is back in the lineup. After missing 24 games, injured late January against Anaheim. Paul Cruz with a puck. Richter stops it, leaves it for Karpensev. And Eddie and Koser finish the hit on Cruz. A lot of hitting in this game. Mm. 9.50 to go, first period, game tied 1-1. Flames with six shots, Rangers with two. Petit stops it. Karpensev and Reichel go for it. And Flurry has it back. West Waltz, number 17, is on for Calgary. Koser moves the puck. It's knocked down. Kept in by Trent Yanni. Long shot. Tip wide. Reichel gets to it. Back pass to Petit. Try to one-time it. Didn't get good wood on it. Olchek dumps it down. Calgary's offense thus far is all from their point men. All their shots, basically, have been from the blue line. Long pass to Theo Flurry. Knocked away from him. Flames have four 30-goal scorers, two of whom are not in the lineup tonight, Joe Neuendijk and Gary Roberts. Well, they, they, and then right behind are two 20-goal scorers, McInnes, one of them, uh, who should make it to 30, and German Titoff, the other, who might make it to 30. What a pleasant surprise. He's been, Calgary's been, it's really something to see where they sit in the standings, considering the injuries they've had all season long. Two on one developing. Shot by Bateau is a save by Vernon. Larmer's rebound blocked by Nylander. Good chance for Stefan Matteau. Matteau had a three-point game against the Rangers Friday night. On home ice Sunday, the Blackhawks lost in overtime to St. Louis. And then uh, the next day, Matteau and Noonan on a plane from Chicago to Calgary to meet the Rangers. Al McKinnis has the puck. 8.20 to go in the first. Tied 1-1. McKinnis and Anderson, the goal scorers. Dan Kesmer dumps it in. You mention that Tony Amonti has a goal tonight for Chicago. So, good to see Tony start well with the Blackhawks organization. And nice to see him reunited with his high school buddy, Jeremy Roenick. And Roenick was lobbying for him. And Amonti winds up in Chicago. And best wishes to him and to Mike Gartner. Low bats it toward the net. It was blocked in front. Zalapski holding Tinkin in and Tinkin in holding Zalapski. Low with a hit on Patrick. Kevin yeah, Low looks healthy, doesn't he, Sam? He's throwing about six body checks already here in the first period. Very active. He wanted to get right back in. And boy, he loves to play out here, doesn't he? And looking forward to tomorrow night as well. Glenn Anderson moving in with a puck. He's checked by Yanni. Otto gets it clear. Flurry trying to break down. Low goes over. They both go down. Flurry's glove came off. Low goes right back at Flurry. Uh, Flurry. Oh, and now goes Flurry and Low will go off. Low went to hit Flurry. Flurry expected it. Put his body into Kevin Low, which knocked his glove off. And then the two started to get together, and Flurry was pulled down. Holding will be the call. Bossette makes the call. Power play Calgary in a moment. Kevin Low met up with Theo Flurry, and then they meet up again. And you'll see Flurry's stick is held right there. He got caught up in the, under the armpit of Kevin Lowe, so Calgary goes with their second power play. Roll for one, had one shot on goal on the first one. Zalapski keeps the puck in and shoots. Richter the save. Kukaboom, Leach, Graves, and Anderson for the Rangers. Titov, Flurry, Reichel, 
Zalapski and McKinnis for Calgary. Graves one on one against McKinnis. Backhander is a save. Adam Graves looking for number 50. German Titoff with the puck. Offside, Zalapski left the blue line too soon. Kind of a lazy play there as Calgary tried to gain the zone and they put themselves offside. Well, the New York Rangers with uh, all the deals. How, look at this. <laughs> former Oilers, former Blackhawks. Lowe, Graves, Tinkett, and Messier. Oh, yeah. Mike Hudson counts twice because he did play briefly for the Edmonton <laughs> Oilers. <laughs> <laughs> and Neil Smith, if we win the Stanley Cup, I'll kiss Glenn Sather's backside in Macy's window. Oh. Well, that's because <laughs> Neil said that every time he makes a deal with Glenn Sather, oh, yeah. Glenn Sather says, you're going to win the cup. This, this <laughs> trade will win you the we'll cup. We'll have to talk to Glenn tomorrow night in Edmonton, <laughs> won't we? <laughs> Oh, the Rangers' goal, by the way, was Anderson, his 18th, first as a Ranger from Zuboff and Leach at 8.03. And Leach now has 50 power play points this, excuse me, 48 power play points this season. Flames have one minute to go in their power play here. Intercepted by Bukaboom. First time he couldn't clear, second time well, he, he had could. another strong shift, penalty killing, throwing the body into Zalapski and then into T-Top, then moving the puck out of the zone. He's really doing well in this one so far along the boards. Matteau and Kovalov on with Zuboff and Wells. Wes Waltz moves in with the puck, trying to get it to Kissio. Kissio number 11, just back after missing three games with a fractured jaw. Fractured cheekbone, excuse me. He's had injuries, tough yeah, injuries this, year, this season. Yeah, fractured kneecap, the problem with the shoulder, and then the problem with the cheekbone. Here's an icing call against Calgary. The Rangers do a good job working the penalty kill units. Glad you're with us tonight. Tomorrow night, same thing. 9.30 Eastern time, only tomorrow night it's on MSG1. Rangers and the Edmonton Oilers from the Northlands Coliseum. Hope you join us for that one. That will be the return of all those former Oilers and the first time back for Craig McTavish. And probably a real good chance for Mark Messier to get back in the lineup. And I, I think you'll see the Oiler fans react very favorably to the fact that McTavish is coming back into town for his uh, first time as, as a player other than an oiler since he was an oiler. Class. That's very, all, very well respected, yes. The big headline talked about in the Edmonton newspaper was the class of Craig McTavish. 35 years old, spent five seasons in the Bruins organization, and nine seasons with the Edmonton Oilers. Brian Noonan is on with McTavish. Kissio with the puck. Eight seconds to go in the Calgary power play. Noonan goes for it against Petit. Across the line comes Nylander. Wes Waltz plays it against Zuboff. Teams are back at full strength. Low is back on. Yanni unable to keep it in. No shots on goal. Excuse me, one shot on goal during that power play for the Flames. Flames are out shooting the Rangers 7-4. The game is tied 1-1 with five minutes to go in the first period. McKinnis plays the puck. Rangers have McTavish on with Anderson and Graves. Bukaboom reaches for the puck, lost it to Paul Cruz, oh, and man. a save by Richter. There is Richter back in form. Great save as the puck was mishandled in the Rangers' zone. Joel Otto will dump the puck in to the side of Brian Leach, and here comes Jeff Bukaboom. Everything's all right. Wrong. Cruz switched hands. That was a pretty good shot. He's only had two goals in 58 games. And Mike Richter with a sensational save. Alert save. McKinnis moves it down the boards. Otto with Cruz and Stern. Deaconin checks Ronnie Stern. The puck moves up the boards. Bounces down to Glenn Anderson. Greens with a long shot. Club saved by Vernon on a rocket of a shot by Adam Gray. We haven't seen that often all season long. Not often do you see... Graves take the slap shot from just inside the blue line. This looked like a real accurate shot. Certainly got everything on it as Anderson was moving up ice with him. He stayed wide, saw that he basically was by himself. You see him working both defensemen. He tries to take one and use him as a screen. Look at that. He forced Vernon into being very good on that play. Adam Graves, 23 goals in the last 30 games as he moves close to the Ranger record. He is close. One away from tying Vic Hadfield's all-time single season record of 50. And two away from becoming the record holder. Tinkin in with a good play at the line. 4.15 to go in the first. Game tied 1-1. 
Leach for Bukaboom. Green winds up. Long shot into the chest of Vernon. That was another hard shot. Up. That handcuffed Mike a little bit. He had a little trouble with it and finally had to cover it up for the defensive zone draw. Another, this was a high rising shot from Adam Graves who looks like he's just going to take and put the puck on goal as much as possible if there's no one open. Again, using the defenseman of the screen. It may have gone off the stick of McKinnis enough to force Mike into playing the puck in an awkward fashion. Good hard shot. Otto had won the draw and the Flames had trouble getting the puck up ice. Calgary makes a change and Reichel's now their sentiment. During the first intermission, the president and general manager of the Rangers, Neil Smith, will join us in the booth. We'll talk about the trades yesterday. Bob Page at the MSG Sports Desk with an update. And J.D. and I will look at first period highlights, and we hope you'll stay with us. And we understand Bob will have a comment on the deal from Mike Gartner, who was up in Toronto, traveled to Toronto yesterday, uh, practiced with the team today, and uh, had a conference call with the New York Ranger media today and also uh, um, had the news conference in Toronto. From what I understand, he handled himself very well. He felt that there was some unfinished business as far as the Rangers went. But knowing Mike, if there's one spot he really wanted to go to, if he had to be traded, it would be Toronto. Not and he handled himself well. I have to tell you, it was a thrill watching him play, oh, yeah. a thrill calling his goals. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, 500 and 600. Huh? Just a great uh, joy for me to have uh, seen him here with the Rangers. And uh, certainly, I know it goes for you, too. I wish him the best. Sure. You know, that's part of this racket. You, you, the hockey business is a tough business at times. The Rangers wanted to make themselves what they feel is a better playoff team. Time will tell that. And good people come and good people go. It's, it's a tough business, believe me. Kevin Lowe dumps it in. Raleigh to Lasky to the puck with three and a half minutes to go in the first period. Murray moves it, stopped by Matteau, sets up Larmer, shot it wide. Now Zuboff lines up, his shot is a save by Vernon. Kovalov shoots, deflected, save Vernon. Couple All of started. tough saves by Mike Vernon, Matteau, <laughs> and Fleury going at it. Matteau just trying to swat Fleury away. Get away from me. It's like a butterfly <laughs> floating around. Started with a good hit by Kovalov. Took the body well, and Calgary had trouble moving the puck, and Mike Vernon with some sharp saves. The shots are now eight apiece as the Rangers have a good flurry. <clears throat> a good you flurry? didn't get that? <laughs> like that one. Here's the good shot, a low shot by Zuboff. You see the rebound get away. You're going to see Kovalov here handle the puck with a skate and then get the good low shot. And Vernon makes another save with two Rangers there. Here comes Flurry a little late. Look at this. Get away from me. Just get away, will you? Smack. Please just leave me alone, will you? <laughs> that's why Flurry's wearing the captain C, and that's why he's a good player because he's fearless. Neil Smith finally got his man. He, he said that in 1987, Neil Smith took Yves Racine and Stefan Matteau to see Bon Jovi at Joe Louis Arena because they wanted to get Matteau in the second round, but he was drafted by Calgary. Here's a two-on-one. Nylander and Kesmer move in, and it hit the post. Tough shot by Nylander, hit the post. Rangers Tony has it back. Rangers had two players fall down at the Calgary blue line, and the odd man rush was in Calgary's favor. Kesmer, a defenseman, moved up in the play as the forward. They have three defensemen on for Calgary right now. Yoni, Kesmer, and Fati. The puck deflects into the Calgary bench. Calgary has dressed seven defensemen for the game. They've been happy here with Nylander coming over in the Hartford deal. Very happy with him offensively. Not big, but he's protected. Watch here as he waits. We talked about him earlier in the period being patient. Well, he was patient there. Vernon got a piece of the puck, and the puck went off the goalpost. Richter. Or, uh, pardon me, yes, Mike Richter, my apologies. See the Rangers there? Two guys caught up and going down at the blue line. Nylander now will turn and face the man who's on the other side thinking pass. No passing lane. There's the shot. Richter got a piece of the puck enough to ricochet it into the goalpost. 2.40 to go in the first. Game side 1-1. Petit and Kiprios for the puck into the corner. Old check is on against Paul Cruz. Trent Yanni moves it out. Kelly Kissio with the puck. Fukuboom back. Around the boards, McCarthy checked by Leach. Bukaboom trying to move it. It was blocked. It's loose. Played by Eddie Olchek. Olchek on with Kiprios and Koser. Vernon has to skip by him. He plays it off the boards. Leach sends it back in. Rangers have to clear out. Yanni out for Paul Cruz. Rangers change line. Well, Sam, we've often seen the Rangers here in Calgary have trouble with the elevation. But they practiced here Saturday. 
or make that Sunday. Practice here Sunday, practice here Monday, and practice here this morning to acclimate themselves somewhat. Good hit by Noonan in the corner. McTavish looking for the puck. Out comes Nylander with Reichel and Fleury. Knocked away nicely by Wells. McTavish with a hit on Musil. Nylander plays the puck. Moving in on Karpovsev, hitting him with the stick. Nylander peeling back. Drops it in the corner for Reichel. Reichel's behind the net to Fleury. Fleury looking for Reichel in front. Goes back to Nylander. Missed it. 120 to go. And can't believe that he missed it. Jay Wells moves out with a puck. 1-1 the score. And Tinkinen gave it away. Uh, Zalapski is stopped by Richter. It hit Great the referee. Save. Another shot was knocked down. It hit the referee, and the referee just now apologized to Tinkinen. It was an accidental play, but that's why Tinkinen lost it. Less than a minute to go. Tinkinen shot deflect high off the glass. Bounces down to Ronnie Stern. Now through the middle. Mike Sullivan drops it off. Zalapski playing it in front for Sullivan, and it went wide as he was knocked down by Kevin Lowe. Graves to the puck with 40 seconds to go in the first period. Graves grabbed by Otto and tackled on the play. Puck sent the other way, and Esatikinen takes over. Goaltenders have both played well in this period. Richter let it, the first shot beat him by Al McKinnon. Since then, he's been very, very good. 11 shots for the Flames, 8 for the Rangers. Game tied 1-1. McInnes and Anderson, the goal scorers. Stefan Matteau moving in, his pass blocked by Zalapski. Kissio's got the puck. Ten seconds to go in the period. He stopped at the line. Zuboff has it. And that's going to do it for the first period. So the New York Rangers with four new players in the lineup. Mark Messier not dressed tonight. Eddie Olchek returning to the lineup have a pretty good road period. They trailed 1-0 on the early goal by Al McInnes. Then Mike Richter and Mike Vernon played well. 1-1 end of one back with Neil Smith right after this. Back at the Olympic Saddle Dome in Calgary, where the Rangers and Calgary Flames are tied 1-1, and I'm joined by the President and General Manager of the New York Rangers, Neil Smith. And on Tuesday, Neil stayed off the phone. What a day Monday was, huh? It was a big day, Sam. Great day for the franchise, so I think we got some real good contributions to the team made. Are you taking a big gamble with the moves that you made, especially the Mike Gartner trade, a fan favorite, a future Hall of Famer? Have you taken a gamble with that move? Well, I don't know that I'd call it a gamble. It's, and, and by the way, it's a Neil Smith favor, too. Mike Gartner, the time he was here, he's a wonderful person and a great contributor over the four years he was here. But uh, we felt that our team needed more playoff readiness and, and players who had been through the playoff battles and been successful. We had the chance to get not only Glenn Anderson, but also the draft choice and the, and the prospect that we feel very good about in Malone. And uh, it's a move that our coaches and our management just felt good about. We just wanted to move in that direction. The move, the trade for Stefan Matteau and Brian Noonan, was that uh, initiated by Mike Keenan coming to you and saying, I, I know these guys, I want these guys? Well, naturally, uh, Mike had immense input on Chicago Blackhawks lineup. It would be silly to do a trade with them otherwise. But actually, Bob Polford had been after me since uh, training camp for Tony Amante, reunite him and Ronick together on a line. Um, we waited and waited and kept going all season trying to get the most we could and, and this was a deal that we're very happy with. Matto is the same age basically as Tony and Brian Noonan is a, a player that Mike Keenan feels very good about so uh, both of them again went to the finals with Mike in, uh, two years ago. Is this strictly a move for now? I don't think so Sam because I think in, in the moves and if you encompass all the moves uh, the Peter Anderson move gives us a draft choice the, uh, the move with uh, Toronto gives us a draft choice and a young player. Uh, we lost a good young player in Todd Marchand to get McTavish. Uh, Stefan Matto's got as much time left as Tony did, and, and Brian Noonan has four years or five years left in him. So I don't think it's strictly a move for right now. You might look at McTavish and at Anderson and say that they've got a limited future in the National Hockey League because of their age, but um, I think that uh, certainly when you think you're on the verge of something, you make a few key moves and players may only have a little while left. Hopefully they'll have more time left, but if they only play this season and they contribute to us doing well in the playoffs, it'll be worth it. 
Are you relieved it's over now? I'm happy. <laughs> I'm very happy. Good luck. Thanks. Neil Smith joining us. Coming up next, Bob Page at the MSG Sports Desk with an update. We are back to look at the first period scoring summary. Brought to you by your by Amtrak with 16 departures to downtown DC every business day. McKinnis is 24th at 128. Anderson is 18th, first as a New York Ranger. Power play goal at 803. Flames 11 shots, Rangers 8. And joining us in the booth, the man to the far left, the captain, Mark Messier. Good to see you here, Mark. Thank you, guys. Plan on being back on the ice tomorrow? Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting back there. I was uh, actually going to play tonight, but they thought one more day off would be uh, would be better, so we're looking forward to getting back tomorrow. You, you wouldn't miss the game in Edmonton, would you? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, uh, give us your thoughts about the, the trade, the deadline, the change in the look of this team. Well, it's been an exciting uh, few hours for the last couple of days anyways. I think that, uh, you know, it's a tough part of the schedule. The last uh, week before trade deadline, uh, we all felt that something was going to happen, but uh, we know, nobody knew how much. And uh, here we are, uh, you know, with us of six trades or different moves in our team. How do you feel about it, the way the team is composed now? Do you feel this will be a better team now? Well, I think that, uh, you know, Mike Keenan, you know, the coach is the leader of the team, and I think that in his mind that he felt that we needed some changes for the playoffs to make us a better hockey team. I think he feels confident in order for him to uh, be able to motivate and sell the, the, the uh, idea that we're going to win the Stanley Cup, he has to believe it. I think he believes it now, and I think it's going to go a long way in uh, making our team believe it. Uh, you're, the, you're the leader on the team, Mark. What do you think the team will do regarding chemistry when you make a change of uh, this amount of players? Well, I think chemistry starts from having good people, and all the people that are coming in here are good quality people, and I think that uh, they've all been in the situation before, and I don't think chemistry is going to be a, 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 a problem with our team. Uh, they're all experienced guys. They've been around, and so I don't think there's going to be one bit of problem with chemistry in the team whatsoever. One thing that I've noticed is people, in particular back in the yard, talking about the deals, the word panic seems to come up, which I think is a little ridiculous. What's your feeling on that? Well, we don't feel panic whatsoever on the on the team. Uh, I think that uh, if anything, we got a pretty experienced bunch of guys right now. I think that um, you know, until you win, until you go all the way and win, you never know. But I think that it, the last month or so, when the things were getting a little tough, tougher, it felt like everybody felt that we needed to make a couple of changes, and uh, it was getting tougher, and we had some injuries that uh, shortened our bench a little bit, and we didn't seem to have the depth to. Uh, that we might need in the playoffs. We had a penalty upcoming to Muse Hill. He was taken out of the play by Matt Toe, and he reacted by putting his arm into the face of Matt Toe. So the Rangers now will get a power play. Their second power play of the game. We are a minute 39 seconds into the second period. Rangers scored on the first one. There is Stefan Matt Toe. Didn't get a chance to ask Neil Smith. Uh, but he said that he really enjoyed the Bon Jovi concert. It was 1987. <laughs> Matteau heading for the locker room, equipment uh, problem. Uh, the Red Wings at the time did draft for a scene. They didn't get a chance to draft Matteau. Hey, Matteau nicely takes Musil right out of the play, rides him into the boards, and you'll see a reaction penalty right there. Forearm into the face, and Fawcett from the other side of the ice, the referee made the call. Elbowing the call on Musil at 139, Rangers' second power play of the game. They're one for one. Flames 420 times short this season, the most of any team yes. in the NHL by far. Only one other team over 400, Sam. Yes, it's amazing. Calgary's had the amount of injuries they've had and the amount of penalties they've taken. Yet they've won quite a number of games. Zuboff to Leach. Leach fakes the shot, moves into the slot, and shoots its block. Puck picked up by Joel Otto, and he's able to clear. Leach and Zuboff with Tikkanen, Anderson, and Graves up front. Peaked off with Otto, Yanni, and Petit for Calgary. Mark, what does Glenn Anderson bring to the team? Well, I think his overall game is uh, pretty strong. His, I guess his biggest uh, thing that he did in Edmonton all the years he was there is he's a great uh, big game player. He's always had the knack of scoring a goal when it was needed. And, uh, and I think that uh, that, along with his experience, is going to be uh, really a big help. Will you look forward to playing with him on the same line? Well, he's just a tremendous player, and you can see the goal that he scored tonight. He has a knack of getting in the right place at the right time, and uh, he's a competitor. He's been down the road before, and uh, he's really looking forward to coming to New York and playing here. Is this any, in, in any way, in your mind, uh, an effort to kind of re just bring the past into the present, you know, turn back the clock and get the, all these Edmonton Oilers players together? Can, I don't think can it be so. Done? I don't think so. I think that uh, we're getting good quality players here, but the thing that's uh, 
good about uh, the situation here now is that we got a great young nucleus on the Rangers to go along with it. And uh, I think that if we can bring some experience and haven't been there before, along with the young guys like Kovalev and Leach and Graves and Richter, then I think it's a, it's a tremendous mix. Rangers with 30 seconds to go on the power play. Game tied 1-1. The whistle stops play for an offside. 16.51 to go in the second. Game tied 1-1. Mark, thanks for joining us. And uh, looking forward to tomorrow night in Edmonton. Well, it's, uh, it's a big trip for us. And uh, we're going to start here, try to get a win out of here tonight. And then we'll look forward to Edmonton. Okay, thanks, Mark. Thank you. Uh, Kovalov beat Mike Vernon's goal stick. Got to the inside. But then uh, you see the puck was swept aside as the Rangers still have 30 seconds to work on their power play. That's Titov. He's on the bench. He was banged up, and you can see he's having trouble getting his breathing going as Bearcat Murray, the fine trainer with the Flames, tries to work with him. Greg McTavish on with Nick Kiprios and Brian Noonan. Brian Leach and Alexander Karpovsev. 25 seconds to go on the Rangers' power play. Karpovsev for McTavish, and now Kiprios. Kiprios checked by Dan Kesmer. Noonan plays the puck against McInnes. Flurry hit by Kiprios. Knocked down. Penalty called on Kiprios. This will be the second penalty of the game that Theo Flurry has drawn to the Rangers. The first one he drew to Kevin Lowe. This time Kiprios with an elbow in the Flurry. So the teams will be at even strength for six seconds. And there's uh, Sam. That, that was a clean hit. See, that didn't there's look no like an elbow. That basically was Nick Kiprios getting penalized because he's much bigger than Flurry and Flurry's body was much smaller he was knocked aside that was a questionable call 333 the time of the penalty teams will skate four aside and in six seconds the flames will go on their third power play of the game Titoff looks to be all right number 13 looks like he'll be able to come back next shift 1-1 the score. Flames, over the last five games in which they've won four, they've given up only ten goals in that span, playing well defensively. John mentioned dressing seven tonight. They have nine healthy defensemen. Right now their forwards are the ones they miss. And Robertson, Neuendijk, here's McKinnis shooting, save, Richter, the rebound, missed by Waltz. Deflected wide by Richter, got a piece of it. Shot by, no, McKinnis goes past. Outside to Lapke, long shot tipped off the glass. Nylander goes for it. Nylander, Reichel, and Waltz for Calgary with McKinnis and Zalapski right. for the power play. Mike Richter with two sharp saves again. The McKinnis shot is always a tough shot to stop, but then he, when you recover as quickly as he did on a West Walls shot, two fine saves. Reichel moves in, still with the puck. Left it for McKinnis. And it's 10 to go on the power play. West Walls back to McKinnis. Long shot off the glass. He's tipped by Glenn Anderson. Anderson on with Matteau, Leach, and Bukaboom. Nylander with the puck. Drops it off for Reichel. Now Zalapski back to Reichel. McKinnis for Reichel. He's there. Shot it high off the glass. Quick shot by Reichel. Quick release. Nylander for the puck. Nylander in front for Reichel off his stick. Leach has the puck and he clears. Calgary will do that a lot. The puck will be on the left defense or the left side. Everybody thinks shot and the pass will go diagonally to the other side of the ice and Reichel will be there waiting for it. They do that a lot on their power play. They always have. Kessio has come on now. Zalapski lost it. Tikkanen slides it down the ice. 25 seconds to go in the penalty to Nick Kiprios. 14.50 to go in the second. Tied 1-1. This is Charlie Zalapski. Off the boards, Kevin Lowe plays it. Germán Titoff on him. Deacon in against Fleury along the boards. Titoff looking for it. This is Kissio out of the corner. Back pass is shot by Patrick. Save, Richter. A good save, and he covers up on the rebound by Titoff. 14-27 to go, second period. The Rangers kill off the Calgary power play. Richter, a couple of good saves well, during this Calgary power play. Top 15 of 16 shots so far in the game. Was happy that he had a couple of days to practice and work on his game. He said he found the net again. And in goaltending language, that's important. When you, when you play a game, you don't feel comfortable. You're not quite sure where your angles are. He said the shooters found the net. I didn't. <laughs> Against Detroit. However, he looks very solid here in this game thus far with Calgary. Deacon in with Matteau and Anderson. Low and Zuboff for the Rangers. Puck knocked down by Paul Cruz. Now Kevin Lowe plays it. Kissio, Flurry, and Cruz on for Calgary with Patrick and Yusil. 
Vernon left the puck behind the net. Kevin Lowe pinching. Patrick able to clear the zone all the way down. This will be an icing. Remember when you're having good times with friends, use good sense and drink responsibly. Please, know when to save when. A reminder from Budweiser. Sergei Zuboff with points now in nine of his last ten games. Coming up with the point on the power play. Adam Graves, skate problem. And I think he's being rather patiently patient sitting there waiting for the skate to come back. As Matteau had a problem with equipment, and now Adam Graves has a problem. Here it comes. As you see the skate coming around the corner with Mike Folga, you'll now stone the blade. Get it ready. There, he's got the stone out. Hands out, checking out the blade. Oh, that's Bruce the masseuse. I apologize. <laughs> Not Mike he's, Folga. He's the delivery man in this instance. Here's a chance for Leach in deep. And it was knocked down. May have hit. A penalty is upcoming. Yeah, penalty Kovalov, upcoming on the Flames. Kovalov got dumped and he's slow getting up. A holding call. I think Mike Vernon used his head. The shot towards the Calgary goaltender hit the mask of Vernon. He made the save. Over on the right side, it's Kovalov trying to get to the net. And you see Kissio hold him up. Now watch the shot. Bingo, right off the shoulder maybe. Maybe not the helmet of Mike Vernon. However, he did make the save. And there's Kovalov finally hitting the deck. Power play time for the Rangers. Third power play of the game. The one for two. Joel Otto and Essa Tinkinen for the draw. Tinkinen with Graves and Anderson. Zuboff and Leach for the Rangers. Otto with Titov. Yanni and Petit. Leach with the shot. Save. Vernon clears the rebound aside. Otto's got the puck. Good shot by Brian Leach. Petit to Titov. Three men into the zone for Calgary. The puck around the boards. And out comes Tinkinen with it. He's got Graves in the neutral zone. Thinking and pulls up, sets the play. Petit chops at it. Tikhoff moves it for Trent Yanni. And Yanni clears. And that Calgary scoring chance. Otto and Tikhoff and neutralized one another on the draw, but Anderson got in there quickly. Got the puck back to the point for the shot on goal. Good play by Anderson. Zuboff with the puck, slides it across to Adam Graves. Now Leach takes the shot wide. Rebound at the outside of the net by Glenn Anderson. Tikhoff and trying to put it in front. Mike Sullivan has it blocked by Anderson. Taken and moves it up to Zuboff at the point. Zuboff looking. Graves in front. Zuboff fakes. Moves around Sullivan. Down the slot. Feeds taken and save Vernon and he holds it. There's a little critic by Zuboff. Interesting. We get out here to Western Canada and he's all of a sudden the center of attention. A lot of people writing stories about him. They all want to know about him. They read his name in the standings regarding points and where he sits. What a play he made to get around Sullivan. Graves is in front. Turns around. You see Yanni trying to move him. Anderson sneaks in behind. Nobody sees him. He wants the puck. He tries to stay away from traffic. Adam Graves is the guy that everybody's attending to. Now watch Zuboff here. Gets the puck, keeps it in nicely. Look at a fake shot, knocking the defender down. Goes around him and it goes against the grain with a pass. Good save by Mike Vernon. Some pretty good plays there. If you watch those two replays. 101 to go on the power play. 12.49 to go second period. Now. What chance does Kovalov have on this draw against Otto? Very little. <laughs> you never know, though. He's All quick. Right, let's see. Yeah, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> but Otto's got the puck. Now Theo Fleury. First of speed by Fleury. Gets him into the Rangers zone. Then he peels back. Leach all over him. Otto takes it. Then Kovalov knocks it away. Kovalov on with Noonan and Matteau. Leach and Zubov. 40 seconds to go on the Rangers power play. 1-1 one, one the score. Brian Noonan pressed by Otto. Leach moves the puck in. Kovalov for Noonan. Noonan against McKinnon. Kovalov with the puck. Matteau set up in front. Leach has it. Now Zubov. Leach fakes the shot. Kovalov along the boards. Matteau on the slot. Kovalov for Zubov who is sneaking in from the right point. Sullivan trying to move it around the boards. He does. Leach pinches in to play it. McInnes is there. Leach holds. Ten seconds in the power play. Now Zubov picked up by Sullivan. Kovalov along the boards. In the corner, Matto back for Kovalov. Kovalov looking. Down low, Matto. Teams are back at full strength. Kovalov turns. The shot is blocked. And McKinnis fires it down the ice. Flames will take an icing good here. Good penalty killing there. The Rangers had the one good scoring chance, and it was a good save by Vernon. Other than that, Calgary kept the Rangers to the outside. Never really got the clean shot. It's through to Mike Vernon. 11.36 remaining in the second period. Game tied 1-1. Rangers now 1-3 on the power play.
here in Calgary, uh, some good news for the Flames organization. The uh, city council approved the plan for the renovation of the Olympic oh. Saddle Dome. Very important uh, to keep the team here them. in yes. Calgary. But you know, Sam, that really upset some people. They had bomb threats today at City yeah. Hall. They had bomb threats today here in this building. And they had to bring the dogs in to check things out. But I'm glad that they found a way to keep the team right here in Calgary where it should be. It's a great city. The Flames represent the city well, and it's good to see they'd be able to get everything taken care of. Tavish on with Larmer and Kiprios. Flames will now take over the management of the building year-round. So they'll be responsible for its use. And they will add some luxury boxes, some club seating, and uh, an important renovation for them. McTavish went hard into Kissio. Kiprios plays it in the flame zone. 11-15 to go second period. Game tied 1-1. Both goals in the first period. McKinnis for Calgary. And Glenn Anderson for the Rangers. In front, Cruz tipping it to Zalatsky, who scores! Great play by Paul Cruz, as he just touched it over to Charlie Zalatsky. You know, gives the Flames a 2-1 lead. The Rangers, I think Devin Lowe had broken his stick. McTavish gave Lowe his stick, and then went to the bench to get another one. As this is happening, now McTavish comes back. The Rangers look to be in good shape, and you can see the quick pass, and Zalapski jumped in on the play. That's a good goal. That's some real good plays here by Calgary. They gain the line, take the hits, and Zalapski moves in, and you see the puck knocked in behind Mike Richter. This is McTavish. Gives his stick to Kevin Lowe. The Rangers seem to be in good shape. He'll take the body on Kelly Kissio right here. Rangers are in good shape. Puck out of the zone. But then when Calgary came up with their next rush with Zalapski on the play, they got it done. And Cruz did not touch the puck. No. He made a good play taking his man away from Zalapski. The goal is Zalapski, his eighth from Waltz and Kissio at 8.56. And the Flames lead 2-1. to one. Vernon plays the puck away from Glenn Anderson. James Patrick moves it. Took a hit from Graves. Out in center, Esatikinen takes over. Anderson checked by Sandy McCarthy. Joel Otto's got it. Now Zalowski moves it to Patrick. Richter leaves it for Bukaboom. Sandy McCarthy forechecking. Now Leach. Graves comes out. It's a long shot. Graves has been really shooting from long That's distance three. tonight. That's three in this game that he's taken from the blue line, making sure he's putting everything on goal. Kevin Lowe back for the puck. He's been skating freely. And back from the back problems. Greg Gilbert drops it off for Eddie Olchek. Isn't it often that you see a team kill a penalty off and do a good job and then come back and score after? Poster's long shot deflected wide, goes up into the crowd. Stopping play with 9.48 to go in the second period. Flames holding a 2-1 lead. New York Yankees getting close to the regular season, John. Go up against the Boston Red Sox. We'll have it for you on MSG Network Saturday, April the 2nd at 2.30. So Yankee how, baseball. How good are they going to be? They're looking pretty good, John. I think they'll be, uh, they'll be battling the Blue Jays. What do you think? I hope so. <laughs> That'd be great to, fun, to watch. Put my order into my free I mean, my tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne Stat, Tony Kubek, and Al Trotwig bring you Yankees baseball all season long right here on MSG Network, the best in the game. Reichel against Olchek. Puck cleared out. Jay Wells going over to try and knock it away from German Titoff. Titoff battles with Wells. Well, still trying to play it. Falls down. Puck loose behind the net. Reichel going for it. Titoff is there. Titoff looking. Pass behind the net to Nylander. Nylander against Karpachev. Dropped it off for Trent Yoni. Jay Wells without a stick. Titoff back to Michel Petit. Now it's deflected wide by Titoff. Nylander taken into the net by Koser. Knocks it off the pegs and play stops with 9.17 to go. Second period. The former captain of the New York Rangers, the man in the middle, Kelly Kissio, went on and it. played uh, in San Jose and almost went to the Chicago Blackhawks. And uh, loves moving it on to Calgary. His two sons play a lot of hockey here. Oh, got behind Richter just wide, and a save by Richter as Titoff trying to stuff it in. Once again, the long shot. Richter made the save, but it almost trickled yeah. into the net. It was a long shot of Al McKinnis, which means it's a little tougher shot got trapped out. That shot score! 
Brian Leach. So Mike Vernon got into trouble, and the Rangers capitalized and have tied the game. Yeah, Calgary won the draw in the Rangers zone. McKinnis with a flat-out rocket right here. And Richter does well to get a piece of it. And oh, man, the puck's in behind. Calgary players had their sticks in the air thinking it was a goal. Back come the Rangers as Vernon is forced by Steve Larmer. Now watch McKinnis save the goal right there. Saves the goal and an alert shot right here. And Mike Vernon could not get back and get steady. So Brian Leach scores his 18th. And the Rangers have tied it up. Good forecheck play by Steve Larmer to force the turnover. Leach had scored only one goal in his previous 10 games, assisted by Larmer, 18th goal of the season for Leach at 11.02, icing whistle on the Flames. Stops play with 8.48 to go in the second, and for the second time in the game, the Rangers have come back to tie. Brian Leach with two points in the game, a goal and an assist to lead the Rangers and responding to wearing the captain's C. Time for our Coke Classic play. For that, we take you into the Rangers locker room this morning after practice. Alexei Kovala, what is no, what, this man what, what, doing? What, what, what and what's that? JD doing? They have taped up Alexander Karpovsev's shoes. So here's Karpovsev picking them up and saying, what is this? Is about 18 pounds of tape wrapped around his nice dress shoes, and the rookie got rooked. <laughs> the Rangers had a little bit of fun. Oh, man. Rookie have a good time at the rookie dinner the other night? Oh, I think so. Pick up the paint, the uh, check, did he? Absolutely. Every year the rookies have to go through that. Olchek took down Yoni, and Yoni's on top of the puck, and the whistle stops play. To the score. And the old check returning to the lineup after missing 24 games, injured his thumb in the game in Anaheim and then underwent surgery. Nice to see him back. We, you and I, were addressed a letter from some fans up in Westchester County. In a snowstorm, a fellow got caught up with his automobile, slid out of control, and somebody stopped to help him after a tow truck driver tried to charge the guy $65 yeah. or something to pull him three feet to get him out of the bank. The guy said no, and somebody stopped to help him, got in and drove the car out of the snowbank like he knew what he was doing. It was Eddie Olchuk and just stopped to, to help somebody in a snowstorm, which is a good thing to do, and we got a letter from the yeah. gentleman saying thank you, and what a good person Eddie Olchuk was. He's right. Yep. Mike Sullivan's got the puck. Sending it in. 2-2 to score with eight minutes to go in the second period. Leach moving it around the board to Glenn Anderson. Out for Essa Tinkinen. Tinkinen checked by James Patrick. Works it in deep. Vernon out to play the puck around the board. Bukaboom pinching against Ronnie Stern. Bukaboom finds the puck. Stern on him. Graves is there. Pass in front for Anderson was broken up by Zalapski. Sullivan goes for it, checked by Leach, and Tinkinen is covering up. Not very often we see Glenn Anderson stand still, especially in the offensive zone. I think that's what makes him tough to check. Out for Anderson in center. Glenn Anderson has not missed a game this season. Played all 73 for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now joining the New York Rangers. Sent in by Reichel, wide of the net, played off the boards. Zubov chipping it ahead. Stefan Manteau trying to clear his block. Richter able to touch it to Zubov. Now Manteau to Kovalov. Let's Kovalov stick handling in on Al McInnes. McInnes stays with him. Larmer comes in for the puck. Trying to get it to Manteau. Back the other way come the Flames. McInnes looks around. Pass Titov. Zubov finds it. Kevin Lowe moves it. For the open man, Stefan Matteau. Matteau started his NHL career in Calgary, went to Chicago for a couple of seasons. And now, straight into the New York Rangers. Kovalov was taken down on the play. Zubov's got the puck toward the net, deflected. Burden oh, the save, and a penalty is oh. upcoming on the Flames. Larmer got nailed. I mean, nailed as he was trying to find the loose puck. The Rangers pretty good along the boards in this game, and that's one area they really wanted to improve on with the trades that they've made. And you see here, the puck is kept in by the Rangers. Larmer will get up and go to the net. Now watch the tricky shot by Zubov. Larmer's there. Watch him take the cross check from behind. Actually more of a shove. McKinnis knocks him down. 
And the Rangers will have a power play. Matt Toes in front, drawing some attention. And you see McKinnis knocking Larmer down. Pretty good shift for that line. Yeah, very good. By Toe and Larmer. They got the puck out of the Rangers zone. Matt Toe twice on that shift was able to move the puck out along the boards. McKinnis for cross-checking Steve Larmer at 13.33. Rangers fourth power uh, play of the game. Here's our first look at Noonan playing the right point on the power play for the Rangers. He's a forward back playing the right defense as Zuboff gets rested. Good play by Leach to keep the puck in the zone and gloved by Vernon. Leach gets more picky up the boards. Noonan got a piece of it to keep it in. Otto trying to clear. He's hounded by Anderson but able to work it down. Richter plays it away from Flurry. Leach and Noonan at the point. Tekin and Anderson and Graves up front. 2-2 the score. Rangers have not led in this game. They come back to tie twice. Noonan with the puck. Graves looking toward the net. Shooting. Saved by Vernon through the screen of Glenn Anderson. Leach toward the net but wide. Tekin and gets it back to Graves. Anderson the man in front now. Graves out. Tekinen's got it. Graves going in front. Shot by Noonan. Save Vernon. The rebound is covered up. Oh, and, Yanni, Yanni. and now Graves yeah. wants that. I don't, Yanni. I don't blame him. Yanni just nailed Anderson right in the face. And that's why Graves got upset. And he wants it, Yanni. And I think Graves will win this one if they allow him to go. Graves is one tough guy. Anderson was in front and when the save, and it was a good save by Mike Vernon, but Yanni just went right across and popped. Anderson right in the kisser. And you can see he, there Yanni's just hanging on. He wants this thing to be broken up sooner than later. Graves got upset with what he saw. Now, would he be given an additional two or not? Graves shaking his right shaking hand. The hand. That's yeah. sore. You can see the index, index knuckle is marked. Good save on a deflection by Mike Vernon. You'll see the puck go to the front. You'll see Vernon struggle and make a good save. Now watch Yanni come across. And boom. And that was all Graves needed to see. <laughs> and away they go. There's still one minute, ten seconds left on the Ranger power play as Al McKinnis is in the box. And discussion going on. Joel Otto. I think he's trying to find a way for Fossett to call an instigator, and it's not been called. And you can see the pain written on Adam Graves' face in the penalty box. That hand hurts. Well, I wonder, you, know, you wonder if they have ice over there. And he should find a way. He's now yelling over to the Rangers' bench. He wants some ice, a bag of ice for his right hand. He may have caught a helmet, Sam. Four minutes apiece, no majors there. Double Four minors, minutes, yeah, for roughing. To Yanni and Graves at 14.23, so it remains a five-on-four advantage, and Sergei Zuboff has taken a towel with some ice over to Adam Graves in the penalty box. Graves, a, a great team man, John, but uh, these are the, the things that uh, always concern me yeah, when you sure. see him getting involved. I understand. You pay a price, though, when you're a great team man. Zuboff to Leach with room. He shoots. Save, Vernon. Rebound knocked away from Kovalov by Otto. And it's cleared by Germont. No, unable to clear. Zuboff keeps it in. Great play. Now Leach moving down the slot. Leach to Zuboff. He's in. And his oh. shot is a save by Vernon. <laughs> now this started with Joel Otto getting beat on the faceoff, I think, by Kovalov. I mean, the Rangers beat a great faceoff guy. And then it was my puck. Let me do whatever, what I can with it. Brilliant plays all over the ice. But Zuboff doesn't get the shot up. Look at this. Great patience, puck control, Vernon's down, Vernon's up, and I guess it was a good check by Joel Otto on Zuboff that made Zuboff keep the shot down and credit Mike Vernon with a fine save. Rangers, watch Kovalov and the Rangers. They beat Joel Otto. Now the Rangers control the puck, good low shots, good hustle to lose pucks. Kovalov's strength there beats Otto. Good hit along the boards. Good, good puck movement. Kovalov along the boards, 45 seconds left in the Rangers' power play. Game tied 2-2. Kovalov winds up, big shot, it's a save by Vernon. Flurry moves it aside, Otto clears. Rangers now shooting Calgary, 21-19. The power play has done everything here but score. Five, just under five minutes to go in the second period. Kovalov on the move. Wards off the check of Titov, played it toward the net. Vernon covers up. Kovalov got knocked down. 22 seconds to go in the power play for the Rangers. 
That last power play movement, which Vernon made the good save on Zubov, it looked like Calgary's power play of a few years ago when Bob Johnson was running the team. You talked to Alex today. He likes playing center. Oh, he he? loves playing center. He said, he said when you, when you play a forward position on the wing and the puck's in your zone, you go up and you stand by the defenseman. And you watch everybody fight for the puck in your zone. Yeah. Then the whistle goes. Then you go off the ice and you get changed. He says, I like center. I can skate and do more things. Now, wait a second. He didn't say it like that. <laughs> no. tell, me, tell me the way. No, no, no. You can't do the Russian No, I can't center. do it. Oh, okay. Rangers play Larmer a lot with Kovalov because Larmer knows the defensive game so well and he can really read plays. And that'll help Kovalov. Rangers won another faceoff. He can beat Otto. Shot is a save by Vernon. Trying to control the rebound. Petit's got it. Got a little help from Flurry. Kept in by Leach. He finds Anderson to the net. He scores! Glenn Anderson! It's a power play goal! And the Rangers take a 3-2 lead. Tikkanen makes the play. Tikkanen up there, the blue line, shipped the puck enough to allow Brian Leach to stay in. Noonan's on the puck. Now watch Tikkanen come across there. Tips the puck, and Leach with a brilliant play to keep the puck in. Now it's a two-man breakaway. There's the shot. Rangers lead 3-2. First time they've led in the game. See Tikkanen? Little deflection. Fine read by Brian Leach. Great pass by Leach. And there's Anderson. Pretty good debut for Glenn Anderson. Bad. Two goals for Glenn Anderson, both on the power play. Brian Leach with a three-point game. A good hustle. Newton really helped create the play along with Leach and, of course, taking in. And there's the shot as Vernon was deep and he got trapped. Well, Rangers with a good-looking power play there. Nylander comes back for Calgary, slowed down by Bukaboom. Puck taken by Leach. Outlets to Noonan. Noonan on with Anderson and Tikkanen. Noonan still with it. The goal is Glenn Anderson, his second of the game, 19th of the season from Tikkanen and Leach at 15-25. Two power play goals for the Rangers, who lead 3-2. Three Three-point game for Brian Leach, a goal and two assists. And Tikkanen breaks a bit of a scoring drought. He had no points in his last five games. Rangers two for four now in the power play. They've had seven shots on those four power plays. 3.55 to go, second period. I knew there was a reason Glenn Anderson scored two goals. He's going to be our guest after the second period. We had to have yep. something to talk about, right? Let me correct myself. I said the Rangers have had seven shots in their four power plays. Wrong. They had seven shots in their last power play, and they've had 11 wow. on the power play throughout the game, and they're two for four on that unit. Glenn Anderson will join us. We'll also have uh, an interview with Mike Keenan, which we taped prior to the start of tonight's game, about all the dealings of yesterday and the new players joining the Rangers. And then J.D. and I will have second period highlights. Hope you'll stay with us. Rangers leading 3-2. to two. Al McInnes brings it across against Zubov. Plays it all the way across for Reichel. Reichel checked by Manteau. Nylander against Kovalov. Reichel into the corner for the puck. Out to McInnes. Dan Kesmer is open for the shot. It's blocked by a sliding Kevin Lowe. 310 to go in the second as McInnes retrieves the puck. Checked there by Greg Gilbert. Kiprios got the stick on it. Ronnie Stern gets into the Rangers zone. Kiprios has the puck and clears the zone. Kesmer back after it. Gilbert after him. Rangers scratches tonight. Two defensemen, Matthias Nordstrom and Doug Glitzter. Mark Messier, who will be back in the lineup tomorrow night, and Mike Hartman back home, the suspended players, Sergei Nemchinov and Mike Hudson. Dan Lacroix joined the team here in Calgary and then was sent back to Binghamton. That one hit the outside of the net. Kiprios battling Patrick. Gilbert finds the puck. Try to set up Olchek. Wells with a shot. The tipped wide. Kiprios battling Kesmer in the crease. The net is knocked off. And Mark Fawcett says it was Kiprios who knocked the net off the pegs. And they'll bring the face off outside the zone with 2.22 to go in the second period. You know, it's not often that you have a 58th wedding anniversary. Barry Watkins, the public relations director for the Rangers, who's had a very busy few days here. This is not his 58th. No, <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> his grandparents, hi, and Eva Epstein in, in uh, New York. Congratulations, 58 and great years. Barry says they don't miss a game. 
That's great. Congratulations. Now the Rangers continue to get better as this game moves along. Sam Nano shooting Calgary 23-19. They're, they're winning the game. They're winning some battles on the boards, battling in front. Eddie Olchuk back in the lineup doing some good things. Now I know Mark Messier only lent Ryan Leach the scene, but he's, uh, oh, he's, he's terrific. responding pretty oh, well yes. tonight with that scene. Now here's McTavish playing the wing with Tekin in the center ice. So we're seeing a lot of different looks here as a flurry and Tekin and battle away from the puck. Slapsky moves it around the boards. Cleared out by Wes Waltz. Bukaboom there to play it. Vernon steers it for Charlie Zalapsky, who scored his first game, a uh, first goal as a Calgary Flame. And this is sixth game since coming over from Hartford. What Patrick he, still looking for his first He point. wasn't overly polite about leaving Hartford. Mm. Talking about Hartford. Oof. Which is a tough situation. You'd love to see Hartford do better and build themselves into a top shelf franchise. They're working at it. Zalapsky in deep against Bukaboom. The puck up the board. Flurry's got it toward the net. Zalapsky has it. Turns. Backhander. Steered wide by Richter. Waltz gets it to Titoff. Titoff's wraparound saved by Richter. Titoff pulled down by Tinkinen. Very quick wraparound attempt by Titoff and a very quick lateral play by Mike Richter to get across. And jam is skate and pad against the right goal post. Titoff, who's a defensive specialist, showing some offensive skills. Tinkinen and Flurry have some words. And Flurry just dropped his left glove. <laughs> he is something. Well, Tegan is something, too, but this is a blast to watch, I gotta tell you. There's that wraparound try by Titoff. And Mike Richter with a good save getting across. You know, Flurry's coming off a game, Sam, in Toronto, where he had a great game, and he really got the the uh, Toronto Hockey Club all upset. In fact, Dougie Gilmore went at him during one particular incident, and the Flames won the game on the road. And he's drawn two penalties in this game. And he and Tegan, and they were nose to nose and jawing away. James Patrick with a shot. Tipped wide. Back behind the net. Low against Reichel. Kovalov looking for the puck. Low tries to move it. kissio has got it. Kissio checked by Zuboff. The puck out of the zone. Rangers have Kovalov with Matteau and Larmer. Alexei Kovalov with it. Kelly Kissio forechecking up the middle. Larmer went flying, the puck rolling down the ice. It'll be an icing on the Rangers. Steve Larmer was tripped up right at center ice. He glares at the referee. And no call. Puck comes back to the Rangers zone now. Will the Rangers use McTavish for the draw in the last minute here? Or will they go with someone else? We'll see what Mike Keenan decides to do. Mike Keenan runs the whole bench. Forwards and defense. With the help of Colin Campbell and usually Dick Todd in the third period. Kovalev on the ice. Oh, baby. Now, now McTavish comes across the bench. Maybe Mike forgot that he was on the team or something. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I've got McTavish. <laughs> well, McTavish certainly stands out. You can't yeah, miss you him on the bench. He's the only man without the helmet. The Rangers have made their change, and then they make an extra change, and I think they're lucky to get McTavish out there. We'll see what happens as he goes against Reichel. And well, he, he, got the gun. Yeah. he got tossed. Yeah, so now Steve Larmer comes in. A little communication now as the players talk about what they're going to do. 56.5 seconds to go in the second. Rangers leading 3-2. to two. Barber wins it. Bukaboom plays the puck. Around for McTavish. And able to clear the zone. Larmer looking for it. McInnes moves to the side as Arlie Zalapki. Good hit by McTavish. Larmer keeping the puck in. Zalapski trying to clear it. Rangers have to go back to play it. Richter waits for it. 35 seconds to go in the period. Pressure from Reichel. The puck goes out of the zone. Calgary not often this season have sent people in deep, but they changed their style a little bit. That time you can see Reichel, the, the first forward's been going in a little more for Calgary as the season moves along. The other people stay back, though, as they try to be defensive-minded without people like Gary Roberts in this game. And, of course, a great player in Joe Neuendijk, who's uh, had problems with, with the knee. You see the... Puck moved all the way up ice. There's no icing as Bukaboom turned to the inside. Now, you see Reichel move in. He's the one guy going deep. Everyone else is above the circle. Good pick play by Leach to allow Bukaboom a little time to move the puck out of the zone. Now, another defensive draw, and this time Tikkanen comes out to go opposite Flurry. Missing two top forwards with Gary Roberts and Joe Neuendijk out. The Calgary goals, both by defensemen, Al McInnes and Zarley Zalapsky. McInnes moves it across for Zalapsky. Low picks him up. That shot tipped wide. Wrap around by Fleury and was stopped. Richter bats at the puck. The shot by Zalapsky deflects to the corner. Fleury fires on goal and stops. 
Richter finally gets up slowly. He's back in position. Final seconds ticking off, and the Rangers survive. That was a dangerous a, moment. A good faceoff win by Fleury, and then he was able to get to the net. Flames moved the puck around well, but they couldn't beat Mike Richter. So the Rangers have themselves pretty good second period here on the road. Goals by Glenn Anderson is second, and Brian Leach. Uh, here's what you call a scramble. Look at R Richter with a stick there. Kept the puck away. Now it can't get through. Man, this is uh, another one of those good flurries. And Zuboff may be credited with a save, a kick save with his left skate. Mike Richter goes off. He's faced 20 shots. The Rangers have a 3-2 lead, end of two. We're back at the Olympic Saddle Dome in Calgary, where the New York Rangers, trailing twice in this game, 1-0 and 2-1, now have a 3-2 lead, getting excellent performances from Brian Leach with a goal and two assists. Good goaltending from Mike Richter and the newly acquired Glenn Anderson with two goals in the game, both on the power play. Seeing a little bit of everything here in this one. The power plays look good, uh, scoring twice and getting a lot of scoring chances. Mike Richter's coming back after what he would call a bad game against Detroit. And the, the newer players seem to be playing pretty well, especially along the boards. This is a, a big Calgary team, and there's a lot of those rough battles and board battles, and we're seeing a lot of that. And this is the type of road game you have to go out and try to play in order to win. And basically, uh, you know, this is what the Rangers were looking for. Glenn Anderson has joined us uh, in the studio, and Glenn, uh, first off, how does it feel to be in the, with the Rangers and uh, get off to a great start? Well, it's great. It takes uh, a little while to get used to the... Uh, to the uniforms and uh, but playing with uh, Tick and Gravy it uh, makes it a lot easier because I played with them before and, uh, and at least I know their names so it uh, makes it a lot easier. Glenn, what does being traded mean to you? I mean, as a player? Uh, well, I think it means that you're still wanted in the league. <laughs> at my age, I think you can take any advantage that you can and uh, and try to uh, take uh, see it in a positive way. I think that uh, as as long as uh, New York wants me here, I, I think they, they've got one thing in mind and one thing only, and that's uh, to prove themselves that they're a winner. And uh, I think by acquiring me, I, I hope that's what they have in mind. Glenn, a lot of talk around Toronto that you were perhaps thinking after this season, leaving the Leafs and going over to Europe to play next season. Will you reevaluate that decision now that you're a New York Ranger? Like I, I mentioned earlier, I mean, every year I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it and... Uh, and once the season's over, come J July or uh, or uh, August, I'll, I'll sit down and uh, uh, hopefully my body will be healed by that time and uh, assess if uh, I want to play in the NHL again and uh, and accomplish what I've always wanted to do thus far. And that's um, my goal is to uh, win another Stanley Cup with another team, and uh, I think we can do that right here. Seems like you fit in on the power play right away. Um, yeah. And, it seems like uh, we uh, uh, we seem to move it around quite nicely with uh, Adam and the two-point man and uh, <laughs> and Dick. Uh, it's great to have uh, the point man that we do have there because their passes are so uh, are are unique. Uh, they spin the puck properly and they they saucer it over and it lands right on your uh, tape every time. And the, the shots that they do have, they just hammer it. And if it's uh, not going in, uh, there's going to be a big rebound or a great deflection. So it's those assets that you have uh, make a great power play, and, uh, and it's tough to defend against. Well, Glenn, thanks for joining us. Good luck. And by the way, we're in Vancouver in a few days. We like salmon, and I know your dad is a salmon fisherman. We love it, big boy. Don't be afraid to spread it around. No, absolutely <laughs> not. Thank you, guys. All right, Glenn Anderson joining us. Between Furries, we'll be back with an interview with Mike Keenan in a moment. Welcome back to New York Rangers Hockey. Coach Mike Keenan has joined me. And Mike, uh, big shakeup, new players in the lineup. Are the Rangers a better team now as you head for the final month of the season and toward the playoffs? I think we have to be considered to have a better team right now. I don't consider it to be a shakeup. I think it's a, a great addition to our hockey club. I felt that uh, Neil did a superb job uh, for us on the trading deadline, uh, the acquisitions. He brought the hockey club basically and fundamentally he brought uh, four regular hockey players to our to our lineup, experienced hockey players in terms of both regular season and playoff experience and uh, had to relinquish two excellent hockey players to do that. And uh, the addition uh, gives us size, strength, experience and depth. And I think you need that for the Stanley Cup. 
playoffs and uh, for the run here with the uh, two players suspended and Mark out injured. We talk about chemistry, talk about blending into the system. Uh, will it take a long time for you to get them into the system, so to speak, and know the way uh, you want them to, to play with the rest of the players? No, I don't think so at all. Uh, three of the four players have played for me before, uh, either in Canada Cup or in uh, Chicago. So uh, that's not a problem, and we certainly don't feel there's any problem in terms of team chemistry or balance uh, with the leadership we have in the locker room with Adam Graves, Mark Messier, Steve Larmer, Kevin Lowell, uh, Brian Leach, I could go on and on. Uh, the adaptation won't take long at all and the people are very familiar with us. It's not bringing in people that we don't know. We know these players. Uh, we felt that they would mesh very well together. Many of them have played together in Canada Cups or along the way and, uh, and for that reason uh, with a month ago we had no fears uh, whatsoever in terms of uh, uh, having the team mesh and, and the quality of the team certainly has improved as far as we're concerned. Thank you Mike. Thank you. Mike seems very pleased with the acquisitions as the Rangers head toward the playoffs. We'll be back with a look at second period highlights right after this. New York Rangers hockey is brought to you in part by Nobody Beats the Wiz. For state-of-the-art home electronics, computers, cameras, music, movies, and more, nobody beats the Wiz. By Modell Sporting Goods, where you'll find top brand names and low, low prices. Nike, Starter, Champion, and more. Call 1-800-ASK-MODELL for the Models nearest you. And by the new Dodge. See your local Dodge dealer today. Yesterday was a very hectic and trying time for the New York Rangers with the trades that were made. Mike Gartner left the team earlier today. Our producer Joe Whalen talked to him. Well, I was certainly a little bit shocked when I first heard the news and uh, I guess a little bit disappointed that I didn't get an opportunity to finish something in New York that I had started uh, four years ago when I came. And uh, at the same time, I was, uh, I was very excited about going to Toronto and, and uh, coming here is like coming back home for me. I'm from this area and, and going from one contending team to another is, is uh, very important as well. So I have very mixed emotions right now, uh, being disappointed at the same time as, uh, as being excited. I don't regret anything. I mean, I, I came there five years ago and, and, and played uh, the best that I could play and gave as much to the team and to the community as I possibly could. And I, I really leave with, with no regrets. Uh, I think the Ranger organization, uh, Neil Smith, have, uh, they've treated me uh, fairly and, and I really have, I have nothing but good memories. Unfortunately, uh, it, it didn't finish out that way. I was hoping to finish my career in New York and uh, over the next few years and that didn't happen, but I, I leave with uh, good memories. And our thanks to producer Joe Whalen doing that phone interview today with Mike Gartner, who was in Toronto. Teams start the third period, skating four aside. Unsportsmanlike conduct penalties to Kevin Lowe and Theo Fleury at the end of the second period. The Flames scored their first goal on a four-on-four -four by Al McInnes. And just to reiterate something I said earlier, class act all the way, Mike Gartner. It was just a thrill for me, and I know for John, too, to broadcast the games uh, in which he played. It was exciting to see him play. He's a future Hall of Famer, a great family man. Uh, his wife, Colleen, very active with the wives and putting together the charity event. And just great people. It was great to have him here those years uh, that he was here with the Rangers. And, and comes from a great family, too. Yeah. Your parents, nice, nice people living up in Ontario. Wish everybody all the best. Brian Leach with the puck as we are underway in the third period. Al McInnes with Zarley Zalapski. Michael Nylander, number 92, and German Titov, number 13. Rangers have Kovalov and Matteau with Karpovsev and Zubov. Matteau swings the puck around to Zubov. Now Kovalov, nice pass. Two on one developing, Karpovsev and Matteau. Karpovsev goes in and took it too deep. Around the boards, Dan Kesmer clears it out for German Titov. Matteau with a hit on him. Matteau's played a nice, so a smart game, game along the boards in particular. Kovalov made the pass that led to the two on one where the Rangers didn't get the shot. Kovalov against Kesmer. Kesmer stays with him. Kovalov leaving it along the boards for Brian Noonan. McKinnis takes over, gets it across. Kovalov was taken dive. down by Kesmer on the play. A dive there, Sam. He tried to draw a penalty. The referee watched and said no. Ten seconds left in the four-on-four. 
situation. Richter leaves the puck for Brian Noonan. Low and Flurry set to return. Tinkinen dumps it out of the zone. Zuboff goes for it, pushes it into the Calgary zone and chases. Teams back at full strength. A little over two minutes gone by in the third. Rangers three, Flames two. Leach is past. Noonan getting it to Tinkinen. Tinkinen moves in and shoots wide around the boards. Played by Leach. Tinkinen on the ice, Flurry's on the ice. <laughs> uh, Tinkinen goes off and Flurry's getting ready to go off. Hey, I kind of missed them doing something. <laughs> it's always some fun. You know something's going to go on. Kovalov try to move it. Puck picked up by Kissio. That's an off side. There's the whistle stopping play. A little over two and a half minutes gone by in the third. We'll take a look at the second period scoring summary brought to you by your Tri-State GMC truck dealers. The strength of experience. Zalapski's first goal as a flame. His eighth of the season at 8.56 made it 2-1. Leach tied at 11.02 from Larmer and Kovalov. Power play goal by Glenn Anderson, second of the game from Tikkanen and Leach at 15.25. Seven of those 15 shots for the Rangers by Brian Leach. Rangers two for four on the power play and the Flames are 0 for three. And at least seven of those shots on the power play for the Rangers. Puck bouncing side of the net. Pukaboom has the puck. Forced by Kissio. Leach helps out. See, there's that first man deep again, Sam, for Calgary. And the other four players staying above the circle. Just hoping for a turnover a little bit. For Calgary changing their style as the season moves along. Icing waved off. Vernon plays the puck for Trent Yanni. Rangers go to Edmonton to play tomorrow night. Then on to Vancouver for a game Friday night. Sunday afternoon in Winnipeg, and that game will be on ABC TV. One of uh, a few regional games that ABC TV will be televising Sunday afternoon and for the next three weeks of the regular season. Along the boards, Ronnie Stern looking toward the net. That hit the post. Richter never saw it, never, never moved. Saw it at all. What a rocket by Stern, and it banged off the post. Stern has it again. 16.20 to go in the third as Zuboff knocks the puck down. Stern forechecking. And there's Nylander against Kevin Lowe off the glass. In center, Patrick and Graves are tied up. Taken and got tripped up. Rangers get onside as Anderson chases for the puck. Around is Zarley Zalapski. Zalapski hit from behind by Anderson. That could have warranted a penalty, I thought. No, John, you don't yeah. think so, huh? It hit the side of him, I thought, more than anything else, Sam. Okay. No penalty. The referee is standing right there. Ronnie Stern came close to tying it right here, John. He's got eight goals in the season. He saw the screen set up, so he just drove the puck. And with those two players standing right in front of Mike Richter, he didn't see the shot. And then on the goal post. The Rangers get a break on that play. Hasn't been a shot registered here in the third period yet. We've played four minutes. Taken in with Graves and Anderson. Leach and Bukaboom for the Rangers. Otto with Stern, Cruz, Patrick, and Zalapski for Calgary. Puck around the boards. Bukaboom right. goes for it. And an icing whistled That's on the play. That's a play where communication really worked. Mike Richter was thinking about going to get the puck, and you could hear the, the players just screaming, icing, icing, icing. So he let it go. Rangers got there first. The face off comes back down to Calgary's zone. And Graves, that right hand must be all right, Sam, after getting into the fight with Yanni. Two, two teammates now who are former teammates in Edmonton, Jeff Bukaboom and Glenn Anderson. Four of the five players on the ice, Graves, Deaconin, Anderson, and Bukaboom. By the way, the seven ex-Oilers that are now with the Rangers all won the last Stanley Cup. They were all on that team that the Oilers won. Don't forget we're counting Mike Hudson as an ex-Oiler, too, so he makes it eight. Uh, uh, yeah, but, but he does seven that, that, that other here, group. Yeah. <laughs> He just had a brief stay with the Oilers before coming to the Rangers. Bukaboom knocks down Paul Cruz, hits him against the boards. Otto took a hit from Leach. Graves plays the puck up and out of the zone. Taking an intercept, breaks across the line and takes the shot off the stick of Zalapki. James Patrick moves it ahead. Ronnie Stern with the puck. Leach is there. Leach with a hip check, took him out. Excellent check by Brian Leach. Bukaboom looking up ice. Leach coming forward. Leach drives it. Knocked away with a blocker by Mike Vernon. Five minutes gone by third period. 3-2 Rangers leading it. Al McInnes. 
Rangers coming in to play tonight just one point ahead of the New Jersey Devils with a game in hand. Sandy McCarthy with a puck. Blocked by Kevin Lowe. He's got it again. Back pass to the point. Shot by Musil is blocked. And the Rangers break down. Noonan blocked that shot by Musil. McKinnis has it back. Kiprios pressing him. Kiprios, Olchek, and Noonan on for the Rangers. Frank Musil with it. McCarthy checked by Lowe. Olchek keeping it in. And McCarthy sending it ahead to Robert Reichel. Reichel drops it off for Sandy McCarthy. McCarthy in deep against Kevin Lowe. Puck loose. Noonan finds it. Cross to Kevin Lowe. Five, make it 14 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the third. Zubov. Cross the line. McTavish looking, faking, cutting in, and lost control. Didn't get a shot off. Where you want to get the shot. A great play by Zubov. Set up that play. Flurry with Karpov said there. Pass across for Nylander. Hit the post. That's two posts here in the third for the Calgary Flames. Well, McTavish didn't go to the net with a puck. You want to try to do that instead of getting too fancy. And Nylander made one wonderful play to find the way to get the shot. Nylander looks a lot better here, John, than I, I can recall him with the Hartford Whalers. Yeah. Nylander with the puck, and he's very big man in that trade. Though Zalapski and Patrick very important. Nylander is certainly the Flames hope that he will develop into a future star. Supporting cast makes a difference too, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Playing with some players that are better players than what Hartford has, it certainly puts him into a much better position to get things done. Flurry chopping at the puck. He goes flying, so does Jay Wells. Dan Kesmer back for it. 13 minutes to go in the third period. 3-2, Rangers leading it. No scoring here in the third. Sent in by Nylander. Richter out to stop the puck. The Flames have hit the post twice here in the third. First Ronnie Stern, then Michael Nylander. They're both to the same spot. High to the glove side. The stick glove, that is. Armour's pass went out of the zone. West Waltz with Steve Larmer all over him. Good play by Larmer. Sent back in. Bukaboom takes over. Larmer. Kovalov. Kovalov against Musil. Cuts in. Nice play by Al McInnes. McInnes, who's recognized mostly for his well, offensive skills, can play the defense uh, as well. He'll be a free agent at the end of the season where if another team signs him to an offer sheet, that Calgary has a chance to offer. To match. Or to match, pardon me. He looked pretty good in the Ranger uniform. <laughs> <I think. laughs> oh, you played the GM? No, I'm not playing any kind of run. I'm just oh. saying he looked pretty good in the Ranger uniform. He absolutely would. Al McKinnis drives it. Saved by Richter. Rebound. Score. Michael. And that's what McKinnis does. So dangerous with that shot. Richter made the first save. Reichel with the rebound. Ties the game 3-3. Well, Rangers didn't get the puck deep. McKinnis gets another point off one of his shots. Not a pass. Puts a shot on goal. And Reichel, who's been on fire with the Flames, gets his second point in this game. That now gives him 38 points since the All-Star break. And that's, this is 28th game. Now McKinnis, with that big shot, gets it away quick. He'll turn, thinking he may have to go back and play defense. The goal scored. He celebrates. We're tied at three. The Rangers not getting the puck deep, Sam, with the other at the uh, flame blue line. Reichel now the team leader in goal scored. He had been tied with Gary Roberts and Joe Neuendijk at 36. Reichel now with a team high 37. He leads the flame in goals and points. Reichel from McKinnis and Stern at 7.59. The game is tied. This good sense when you drink. Know when to say when. A reminder from Budweiser. Mike Keenan looks on. He doesn't have all that much voice left. Still has a uh, little uh, throat problem. He's cold. Long shot by Yorny. Got by Richter, but he made it. Got enough of it that it deflected wide. Got a couple of adventures tonight. Richter's made some really good save and they, saves, and there have been some adventures. Well, it certainly has here in the third period. Keegan and an auto push a little bit. Things settle down. Graves threw one big hit into Yanni. Remember, they had a fight earlier in the game. He absolutely freight trained Yanni, knocking him over. This is the shot from the point that Richter has problems with. Oof, close play. Calgary's coming on a bit. The Rangers have yet to lose when they lead going into the third period. Look, Graves move in on Yanni. But dang. <laughs> the Rangers have won 34 times. 
have yet to lose and tied three times when they've led going into the third period. They led going into this third period. They're now tied at three. 11.36 remaining in the third. McTavish has come on with Noonan and Kiprios as the wave moves around the Olympic saddle dome. Leach and Bukaboom. Steele, Kissio moving in. Checked by McTavish, who lost the stick. Kissio with a hit on Leach. Petoff takes it away. Kiss, uh, rather, Leach stays with him. Kissio's pass intercepted. And Kiprios has the puck. Now McTavish. Around the board, Vernon looks up ice. Back into the corner, McKinnis against McTavish. Fleury. Sits down in the zone, and Leach has it. Noonan back across to McTavish moving in. Save made by Vernon. Good play between Noonan and McTavish. Leach has the puck. Noonan moves in again. Dumps it down. Rangers change. Matteau is on. Matteau working against Zalapski. Now against McInnes. Larmer is there. Kissio has the puck. Zubov. Turns it the other way for Steve Larmer. Larmer against Trent Yawney. Big shot, save Vernon. Cleared out by Nylander. Rangers regain control. Zuboff and Lowe on defense. Kovalov has the puck. Up the middle for Graves. Now Larmer across. Again, there's Trent Yawney. Graves against James Patrick. Graves comes out in front. Nice poke check by Vernon. Kovalov got it back to Zuboff. Save Vernon. What a play by Kovalov as he was knocked down. He got the pass back to Zuboff for the shot. West Waltz moves in. Tries to break through. It's knocked aside. Kovalov against Paul Cruz. Zuboff clears the zone. Past the midway point of the third period. 9.50 to go. Rangers three, Flames three. Zuboff for Glenn Anderson off his skate. Back to the puck, Al McInnes. McInnes with a goal and an assist in the game. Leach a goal and two assists. Glenn Anderson with two goals in the game. Reichel with a goal and an assist. McInnes takes over. <laughs> Take it in flurry. <laughs> the adventure continues. It's part of the show. McInnes lifts it out, and it's batted over the boards by Theo Fleury in the crowd, 9.18 to go in the third. And when Fleury and Tinkin and meet up, and they do uh, collide, it's usually a clean collision, but then things happen after the collision. And that's what happened on the last play. Fleury and Tinkin had met up, and then Fleury threw an extra little pop into S. and Tinkin. And Fleury wasn't having a great stretch, and then the team put the C on his jersey, the captain for the leadership on the ice, and he picked up his play. But Tinkin in this game, and yeah, we've really seen Essa Tinkinen at his best. You know, he's had some quiet games along the way, but here in this one, he's elevated his play. He's been antagonistic, he's, and he's played well. And the Rangers are going to need his production, John. His production has really dropped off the last three weeks. And they need Tinkinen to produce. Uh, when the Rangers get back and get healthy and get the players back from the suspension, he won't have quite the responsibility, I don't think. He'll be able to move back to wing and not play center ice. And, your Messier back, and then Pina back, and Hudson back, and then the coaches have decisions to make. Frank Musil looking for the puck. It's moved by Paul Cruz. Reichel was tripped up, and the Rangers get away with it. He was hooked up by Carpet stuff, and everybody in the building looked to see if there was a penalty, and the fans upset. Fawcett was on this side of the ice. It was all the way across, and he didn't see uh, the play. 3-3 in a neutral zone play. He may not make the call unless it's a, a, a play around the goal net where somebody has a scoring chance taken away. He still moves it for German Titov. He's checked there by Karpovsev. And, and down on the play was hurt. Frank Musil getting up slowly, and he's holding his right arm at a strange angle. And the referee blows Double the whistle over. here because of the injury. And his right arm is hanging uh -oh. down. I don't know what happened. I heard a thump, so he must have gotten hit. Fans very unhappy. Frank Musil getting his right arm checked well, out. It's a hard hit, and it's a clean hit by Greg Gilbert moving in. Bang. Now Musil will go down on his right arm there. He's uh, 36 as far as the plus minus goes. And you can see, oh, it's above the right wrist as it's been intended. He's only had one goal, but he's plus 36 going into this game. And he plays very well with Al McKinnis as a, as a partner. 8.41 to go in the third. Tied 3 3. Tikkan and Graves and Anderson on for the Rangers with Leach and Bukabu. Mike Sullivan moves the puck out to Joel Otto. Picked up by Ronnie Stern. Stern against Leach. 
Leach with a bump. Stern has the puck in the corner after to Sullivan behind the net. Left it for Joel Otto. Otto comes out in front. Stern was checked by Leach. And a penalty call on the Rangers. The Rangers got two men caught behind the net. Joel Otto took advantage of it. And then you see Brian Leach reach out. And I think the scoring chance is what was taken away. So that's why the holding call is made by Fawcett. So Calgary will have the power play with the game tied at three. 8.19 to go here in the third period. Big chance for the Calgary Flames, who have not been able to capitalize on the power play in the game. See, the, the Rangers get into a position where two men will get caught up here behind the net, trying to find a loose puck. There's one man. There's two men, two on one. And right away, that means that somebody's open, and Joel Otto found the puck, and he tried to move it across to Stern. There's Otto with the puck, trying to make the play. And there's Leach grabbing hold of Stern, knocking him down before he can get the shot. Holding the call on Brian Leach at 11.41. Rangers have Graves and Anderson with Lowe and Zubov. Now Mike Keenan is, wants Fawcett to come over and talk to him. He's upset. The bench door is open. Fawcett may have given the Rangers a bench minor. Let's see what time, oh, time out. Okay. Called by I think the Rangers then, right? Uh, the moment still... I thought he might give yeah. Mike Keenan a penalty. Look at this, he's having a long talk with Richter. Well, short talk. <laughs> Very interesting here. Musil, by the way, is still on the bench. He has not gone to the locker room for Calgary. Interesting to see Mike use the timeout now. Very seldom have we seen him do that this season. Very seldom. Now talking things over with Dick Todd, who's on the bench with him. Mike Richter has faced 24 shots. And now an important point of this game. With the Flames on the power play and the game tied. Richter gets set. Send out Robert Reichel with Theo Fleury and Germán Pintov. That's Reichel set to take the draw. Al McInnes and Zarley Zalapsky play the points. Flames win the draw. McInnes plays it across. Fleury's got the puck. Shot by Zalapsky goes wide. McInnes pinching. Graves with a hit. In the corner, Titov trying to move the puck. Zuboff battling him. Reichel digs it loose. Blocked by Graves. Zuboff moves it. Graves clears it. Anderson looked over at Graves. Graves went to the bench, so Anderson went two for the quick change. You try to change in pairs to keep the unison of your penalty killers together. Lowe drives it back. Dennis goes back to get it. Larmer and Tikkanen have come on. Here's Reichel on the move, slowed down by Larmer, who takes it away. What a play by Steve Larmer. And sends it down the ice. Yeah, sends it quickly down the ice. Don't, don't get fancy when you kill a penalty. Michelle Petit did in the second grade to cross his team a goal. But he hasn't been back on the ice since. Larmer with a hip check took out Zalapsky, allowing Wells to clear the puck. And Larmer with a terrific shift. Now Tikkanen's got Reichel's helmet off and having words with him. They separate. McInnes moves up ice, 55 seconds to go on the Calgary power play. Zalapsky moves it, took a hit. Bateau with a good hit on, on Kelly Kissio. This is Flurry moving in. Pat intercepted and cleared by Mateau. Flames, flames yet to be able to set up, and if they can't set up, that means Al McInnes can't use his big shot. Up the boards for Kissio with 35 seconds to go on the power play. Mike Salt, rather, Michael Nylander plays it across for Kissio. Glenn Anderson is there to check him. Waltz getting it back to Patrick, sets up Kesmer, the shot wide, Waltz missed the rebound, and Anderson clears. Now there's the first time Calgary could set up, but McInnes had gone to the bench for a change, so he was off the ice, and that's always good news when you're the penalty killing team. Kesmer to Patrick with 10 seconds to go on the power play. Nylander gave it away to Zuboff. What a Zuboff read. holds, leaves it for Graves. Graves moves in with Larmer. Larmer goes after the puck against James Patrick. Seems back at full strength. Flames did not have a shot on goal. Larmer winds, leaves it for low. Down the boards with 6-10 to go in the third. Tied 3-3. Graves against Kesmer. West Waltz plays it. Off the glass. Zuboff got a glove on it. Low plays it. Zuboff sends it back in. Vernon leaves it for Kesmer. No, plays it around the boards for Theo Fleury instead. He gave it up. Larmer's pass tipped by Mike Sullivan all the way back into the Rangers' end. 
Leach comes back for it. 5.45 to go in the third tie. 3-3. Mateau blocked by Ronnie Stern. Leach plays it across to Zuboff. Up the middle for Kovalov. Stern's had a strong third period, in my opinion, for Calgary. Making some good plays. Trent Yoni. Now for Ronnie Stern. Zubov turns, looks up ice. Kovalov on with Olchek and Matteau. Got to get the puck deep. You get the puck in the neutral zone. If you don't get it deep, bad things happen. Here comes McInnes. Zubov has it back. Reichel for checking. Reichel and Titoff on now with Wes Waltz. That pass by Kiprios. Five minutes to go in the third. Not getting the puck deep again. That's two in a row. Wes Waltz across. Playing it toward the net, steered aside by Richter, back behind the net, Wells checking Keith off, Reichel turns with a puck, set up for Patrick, save Richter, rebound, it's score! Charlie Zalapke, second of the game, and again a rebound goal for the Calgary Flames who yep. lead it 4-3. Two things, the Rangers did not get the puck deep, and Nick Kiprios was knocked down. That allowed Patrick to move in. See Nick Kiprios back at the blue line? Fosnet missed it. And, and the Flames certainly take advantage of it with some good play in front of the net. The rebound got away from Richter. You see the shot by Patrick. And there's the rebound beating Mike Richter. The Rangers are very upset. Kiprios was cross-checked at the blue line and knocked down by James Patrick. That's why Patrick has this room. And that's why Kiprios is in behind the play. And he appeals the call. It's not called. The Flames get a break and take advantage of it. And they now lead. First point as a Calgary Flame for James Patrick. Mike Richter deep in thought. Zarley Zalapski with two goals in the game. He's been up ice two. all game. Yeah, he's been up ice a lot in this game. Zalapski's first two since joining the Flames, and Calgary now has regained the lead. Their third lead of the game. They led 1 0, 2 1, and now 4 3. Anderson chipped that shot on goal. Four and a half minutes to go in the third. Yawney moving. And Seekinen was battling with Al McInnes. Back behind the net, Graves for the puck. Checked by Ronnie Stern. Stern trying to move it. Anderson is there. Around the board, Joel Otto and Alexander Karpovsev. Karpovsev, good play on Otto as they wrestle. Out with the puck is Ronnie Stern. Seekinen hooks him. Stern grabs Seekinen's stick trying to draw a penalty. Otto's got the puck. Jay Wells takes over. Four minutes to go in the third. Two goals for the Flames here in the third. And have taken back the lead. Neil Fleury checked by Matteau. As the puck rolls to the goal line. It's an icing on Calgary. No, no it was waved off. off at the last moment. Patrick pinches in. Larmer's got the puck. Matteau has it knocked away. Zalapski takes over. Not getting it deep again. Broken up by Zubov. Larmer lost control. Flurry trying to break in. Saved by Richter. He's got the puck. He's waiting. He moves it off the glass. Bounces down. Flurry moves it back behind the net. Zubov moves out with it. 3-10 to go in the third as Kovalov moves in. Again, McKenna's pass in front. Smothered by Yawning. As Matt Coe was cutting for the net. This is Al McInnes driving it from center. Off the boards to Reichel. Sticked aside by Richter. Leach has it knocked away. Zuboff to the puck. Nylander tied up with Brian Noonan. Alexei Kovalov moves out with it. Nice move on Titoff, but the pass blocked by Nylander. Zuboff plays it off the boards for Noonan. Noonan pushes it ahead for Gilbert, but McInnes tries to clear, and he does. Two and a half minutes to go on the third. 4-3, Flames lead it. As Reichel dumps it in. Harper steps back for it. The last crowd here at the Olympic Saddle Dome likes it. McDavid lost it to Fleury. Now West Waltz with Ronnie Stern. Stern got knocked down by Gilbert. Waltz for the net, saved by Richter. He holds on. You know, Calgary owning the neutral zone here as the period starts to dissipate. 2.13 to go. Calgary leads by one. The Rangers trailing by one, four to three, with 2.13 remaining in the third period. Tinkin and wants another stick. 
had the lead coming in on the third. But the Flames, not only have they scored two goals, they hit the post twice. They had a shot go through Mike Richter just wide of the net. Flames have uh, had, had the a good third play. period, but I think a lot of it has to do with the neutral zone play. The Rangers didn't get the puck deep all period long. That allows the other team to catch you and trap you and get you off balance with your defensive play. Rangers have had only five shots on goal here in the third. Leach moves it up for Graves. Graves peeking in and Anderson on the ice. Anderson with two goals in the game, both on the power play. Vernon out to stop the puck for Zarley Zalapsky. He has two goals. His second of the game, his ninth of the season from Patrick and Reichel at 15-15. Gave the Flames the lead. Did he get hit? Stern skates by to say something to Graves. Graves, as Zalapsky went to shoot the puck off ice, just got absolutely pancaked into the glass as Adam Graves has played another strong game for the Rangers. Three goals in his last four yeah. games, looking for number 50. And remember, the Rangers have already used their timeout. They used it earlier in the period prior to a flame power play. Let's Graves move across, line him up, and it's a good shoulder-on-shoulder -shoulder hit, and look what happens to Zalapsky. <laughs> a lot of power when he throws a body check. Otto against Tikkanen. Wins it back toward the net. McKinnis moves it for Ronnie Stern. Leach pinches in, takes the puck away. Leach moving, fires across. Taken off the boards by Bukaboom. Back behind the net, Graves moves it to Leach. Mikkinen's in front, fires across, went all the way through. Pinching in is Bukaboom on the near side. Graves checked there by Trent Yoni, who lost his helmet. Taken in the corner. Rangers pressing off the stick of Anderson. It's in the crease. Vernon could not control. Graves behind the net. Graves comes out in front. He shoots. And a save by Vernon. And it's cleared out of the zone for an icing by the Flames. Tremendous pressure by the Rangers. Taken in Graves. And Anderson along with Bukaboom and Leach. The best four check they've had all period long. And they battled. They battled. They battled. Mike Vernon was close to being beaten. He's now having words with Glenn Anderson. Talking about how close the puck was near the net. Taken and watch him move over and work on Al McKinnis. They battle. Ooh, oh, man. Right across the nose of Al McKinnis. That was not detected. McKinnis seems to be all right on the bench now. Look how close this is. Vernon thought he had the puck, but it was jammed loose, as you see there. The Raiders really good forecheck. Did everything they possibly could but score. It's easy to see why Essa Tinkinen has a reputation of being a fan yeah. of the you-know-what. <laughs> You're not kidding. Well, now there's a long delay here as Glenn Healy goes into the net. And what's happening here is the Rangers are trying to find a way to rest their players, especially the ones that were just on the ice with, because they've already used their timeout. One minute, 11 seconds to go. It's been a long, tedious slow delay and Graves, Tikkanen, Leach and Anderson all get themselves the benefit of a rest. All right. And Healy is up by the hash marks ready to go to the bench for an extra skater. 111 remaining in the third. Rangers trailing four to three. There's even, Glenn Healy. Even a little thing like Tikkanen now is going over oh. to tell the referee he needs to change his hey. stick. Well, sure, it's a, nope. another delay tactic. Well, well, that says no. no, but it gives his players another 30 seconds to rest. What a piece of work, isn't he? Take it in. Look at this. How he's he's asking working. the linesman. <laughs> <What a man. laughs> he is something. Take it in with Anderson and Graves. Zuboff and Leach. Otto wins the faceoff. James Patrick with the puck around for Theo Fleury. Up the boards, there's Leach. Taken away by Otto. Bounces out of the zone. Thinking and drives it back in. One minute to go. Healy has not left the net yet. Now he's gone to the bench for an extra skater. Puck deep in the flame zone. Rangers battling along the boards. Leach kicks it ahead. Graves is there. Anderson is there. Anderson working against Titov. Shot by Tinkin and saved by Vernon. A great one. What a save. Here's the chance all the way through. Zuboff shoots and it's blocked. Zuboff against Otto. Here's the pass out for Fleury. Looking to an empty net. Leach after him. And he hits the outside with it. Fleury after the puck. Zuboff back for it. 25 seconds to go. One more chance for the Rangers. Leach up the middle. Tinkin and went down trying to draw a penalty. It's driven out of the zone. No block. Tinkin and shoots in front. Bateau, he scores! Stefan Bateau! 
His first as a New York Ranger with 13.9 seconds remaining. Wow! Do you unbelievable. Believe it? The Rangers, they're very close to scoring. Graves, I think, might have scored, but Patrick had his stick. Fleury just missed the open net. Graves keeps the puck in. Matteau's the man that came on the ice because Rick, or, uh, Glenn Ely came to the bench. He's there because of his size and his hands. And a quick backhand. We're tied up at four with 13.9 seconds to go. Baby, wow. do you believe it? Oh, man. Stefan Matteau in his first game as a New York Ranger scores on the backhander to tie it 4-4 with 13.9 seconds remaining in regulation time. And Fossett talking things over with Calgary's coach Dave King. Look at Tikkanen. Great play. Great shift. Great game for him. And you can see him celebrating. Does he love to celebrate? <laughs> Matt Toe's the player that came over the boards from the Ranger bench when Glenn Healy came to the bench for the extra attacker. Fleury just missed. He was forced by Brian Leach and just missed the open net. Rangers came back and Adam Graves. I mean, there's some great play in this game by some great players. I thought McKinnis was definitely going to clear the puck, John. He drove it up the boards, but the Rangers able to keep it in. Final seconds regulation time. Mike Richter is back in net for the Rangers. And it's, it's interesting, too. Very few fans have left. They all stayed because they know they were seeing a good one here. And we've got overtime. Here we what go. a comeback. New York Rangers come back to tie it on the goal by Stefan Matteau at 1946, assisted by Essa Tinkinen, who has two assists in the game. I think Graves should have an assist on the play, too. He's the guy that kept the puck in along the boards and moved it over to Tikkanen. Rangers and Flames go to overtime and we'll be back right after these messages. Eleventh overtime game for the New York Rangers. They're three, one, and six. It is the seventeenth overtime game for the Calgary Flames. They are three, two, and eleven. 4-4 the score, and this has been quite a debut for Glenn Anderson with two goals, for Stefan Matteau with a tying goal, and, and a good uh, game for Essa Tinkin and and back Graves in Alberta. Oh, yeah. And he'll you know, be home tomorrow in Edmonton. Those delay tactics that he went through for about a minute, or and, and Keenan changing the goaltender, it all paid off. Graves was allowed to stay on the ice and be rested, and what a shift he put in late to end up helping the Rangers tie. So here we go. And again, Mike Keenan comes right back with Tinkanen, Graves, and Anderson. Rangers. He starts the overtime, and so he should. They were just fabulous the last few minutes of the period. Rangers 2-1-1 one, and one in overtime games on the road with the loss coming in Montreal. Rangers had a win in L.A. and in Ottawa. Underway in overtime, James Patrick with Zarly Zalapsky, Mike Sullivan, Joel Otto, and Ronnie Stern for Calgary. Deacon and Graves, Anderson, Leach and Bukaboom for the Rangers. And Zalapsky drives it, Richter stops it. Shots are 31 to 30 in favor of the Rangers. And the puck put up into the crowd by Zarly Zalapsky stopping play. Now the Rangers make a change. The players coming on the ice. I'd say they're rested. Farmer and Kovalov. The Matteau joins them, but I would say the rest of yeah, them haven't played for quite a while. on for 10 minutes. <laughs> Tinkanen was skating around, and uh, Mike Keenan who stalled for a little time by putting Glenn Healy in. You saw I had a look at Stefan Matteau. Glenn Anderson has two power play goals in the game. Brian Leach has a goal. Flames getting two goals from Zarly Zalapsky, one from Al McInnes, one from Robert Reichel. It's a good line now that Calgary's got on the ice, in particular Reichel up front and McInnes back on the blue line. So a good, strong unit here. Reichel, Titoff, and Nylander for Calgary with McInnes and Yanni. Zuboff and Lowe with Kovalov, Larmer, and Matteau for the Rangers. Up the middle, Larmer had to go off his stick. Matteau plays it, taken back by Titoff. Kovalov back for the puck, Reichel on him. Little pick from Kevin Lowe, the pass deflected. Uh, Kovalov there has got to go up the boards with a puck, not up the middle. Now Calgary will try to take away the pass from Kevin Lowe to, to Zuboff here. Now the Rangers have to work on the breakout. Good play by Matto. One minute gone by in overtime. Back into the Rangers on it goes. Calgary, to play it. Calgary not forcing here. They want to try and force a turnover with the first pass. Three times in a row, the Rangers can't get out. Vernon leaves it for Al McInnes. 
Rangers change. And who and comes on? Tinkinen, Anderson, and Graves. Puck cleared out. James Patrick back after it. And Otto comes on with Sullivan and Stern to match the Tinkinen, Anderson, Graves line. Bukaboom fires in. Vernon stops it. Zalapski up for Otto quickly. Across, Mike Sullivan moves in on Bukaboom, takes him out. Into the corner, Leach and Stern. Stern moves it back to Sullivan. Checked by Bukaboom. Otto against Tikkanen. Now Mike Sullivan takes over. Trying to get out in front. Bukaboom staying with him. Now it's Otto. Big battle in front. Leach and Stern. From the point, Mike Sullivan deflected all the way across. Off the boards. Anderson takes over. Fans didn't like the fact that Otto was taken down. Just under three minutes remaining in overtime. Flames. Tied at four. Flames are trying to play Ronnie Stern on the right wing whenever Graves is on the ice on left wing. Kissio sends it in. Zuboff looks up ice, forechecking his West Waltz. Up the boards for Brian Noonan. Noonan with Gilbert and McTavish. McTavish moving in on Frenioni. Towards it in, Gilbert saved Vernon. What a pass from McTavish to Gilbert. What a play by Noonan, the way he took the puck off the pass out of the zone to set up the three on two. Great save by Mike Vernon in overtime. Noonan taken out by Yoni. West Waltz the other way. 2.15 to go in overtime. Low back for the puck. Swings it around the boards for Greg Gilbert. Gilbert lifts it out. Patrick has trouble with it. McTavish on him. Leach takes over. Leach plays it off the boards, and James Patrick has it. With just under two minutes to go in overtime, Matteau hounding Patrick. Titov able to clear the zone. Leach shoots it back into the Calgary end. Vernon leaves it for Zalapski. Out for Michael Nylander. Finds the puck. Intercepted by Matteau. Matteau for Larmer. Off his stick, Zalapski cleared it. Matteau sends it in. Minute 35 to go. We are in overtime as Zarley Zalapski makes the pass to Robert Reichel. Reichel moves it on Karpovsev. Save made. Leach clears it aside. Glenn Anderson playing it out of the zone. Al McInnes has it. Right back in it goes. Around the board. Leach and Otto. Otto blocks it. Karpovsev sends it around for Tikkanen. 1-10 to go. Deacon and able to clear the zone as Yanni sends it back. Pass Richter. Karpovsev and Sullivan go for it. Deacon and moves it out of the zone. One minute to go in the game. Shot back in by Patrick. Bounces past Richter. Leach hit by Stern. Leach has the puck. Stern all over him. Leach keeps it alive. Moves it nicely to Deacon and. Deacon and with Anderson. Anderson across against Zalapski. Trying to get back to Tikkanen. Zalapski clears the zone. 40 seconds to go. Zuboff on the move. Rangers changing. Zuboff sends it in. McTavish has come on with Noonan. And Gilbert. Chip clear. Gilbert sends it back in. Blocked by Zalapski. Patrick mishandled it. Noonan shoots wide. Around the boards for Gilbert. He shoots. Gloves saved by Vernon. He holds it. 19.4 seconds to go. Good save by Vernon again. The Rangers putting the puck on goal. A little miscommunication with Zalapski and Patrick as they had some trouble right in front of Mike Vernon. And the number one goaltender for Calgary and has been for many years makes a nice save. Here's so there's Noonan. See how he took the pass out of the zone? Immediate three on two. Then you'll see Gilbert drive to the net. McTavish will put the puck there. And there's Mike Vernon with his best save in overtime. Good save as Gilbert drove to the net. But again, it was a smart play by Noonan taking the puck and getting out of the zone with it. There's the last good shot that Mike Vernon held on to. 19.4 seconds remaining. Greg McTavish stays on with Noonan and Gilbert, and they've had two good shifts yes, here in overtime. And the Rangers put Zuboff and Leach, the power play defenseman, together for this shift late. Look at Otto and McTavish, butt heads. Mm. One without a helmet. They've done that before, haven't they? <laughs> for years here in Alberta. Look at, him. Look at, Look at him. Otto's this. trying to get his head underneath McTavish. Look at McTavish. Well, McTavish puts his head underneath great. Otto, and he can't see the puck. Otto's so tall, if McTavish has his head under Otto's, Otto can't see where the puck's going to go. Now it's Noonan for the faceoff against Fleury. And it's taken by Trent Yoni with 15 seconds. Yoni plays it up the board. Zuboff has it back. Greg Gilbert toward the net. Vernon reaches out. Yoni for the puck with five seconds. 
Up the boards, knocked down by Zuboff, and this one ends in a 4-4 tie. Well, that had a little of everything, John. It certainly did. It was a battle. The Rangers battled all the way through in a very difficult building to try and win. There's, Calgary's been a good home ice team on this season. The Rangers came in here with a bunch of new faces, and the new faces did a pretty good job. Uh, Rangers haven't won here since 1987, <laughs> John. So it's, uh, you said it. It's not an easy place to win. The Rangers get a tie out of this one as the road trip will head on to... Edmonton, this is the first of five straight road games for the Rangers, and it ends a 4-4 tie. The Discover Card game summary, Stefan Matteau with a game-tying goal, 13.9 seconds left in regulation time. His first goal is the New York Ranger. Glenn Anderson with a fine debut, two power play goals. Brian Leach had a goal and two assists as he wore the captain's C tonight. Zarley Zalapski had two goals for the Calgary Flames, and Robert Reichel, who has the team lead in goals, had a goal and two assists. He's the leading scorer, goals and points for the Flames. 4-4 is the final score. We'll be back with our post-game wrap-up in just a moment. Welcome back to New York Rangers hockey. The Delta Airlines player of the game with two assists and bothering everybody, including the officials and other players. <laughs> Essa Tikkanen, uh, one of the <laughs> ultimate agitators in the NHL. Yeah, he played regular pain in the butt hockey, and when he plays like that, the Rangers have a complete different look to them. He was one of many players who played well for both teams. Al McKinnis played well for Calgary. Certainly, you, you think about the Rangers, the new additions played well, along with uh, Zuboff and Tikkanen and Graves and... It just goes on and on. It was a very entertaining game. Here's one of the members of the New Look Rangers, Stefan Matteau. Congratulations on a, an exciting goal, Stefan. Tell us about it. Well, uh, I went to the net and uh, took it and shot it right on, uh, right on my pads, and uh, I was all alone with uh, Vernon, and I kind of had the uh, empty net and only had to put it in. So what kind of a night was it for you? I was very nervous, uh, to be honest with you, before the hockey game, and uh, when the game uh, got uh, going, I was feeling pretty good, and then in the third, I still... So uh, it looked like I didn't have any legs, but uh, managed to put that puck in at the end. Ice time-wise, Stefan, were you surprised at the amount of time you got? You seemed to get quite a bit. Well, I was very surprised. I played a lot tonight with Alex and uh, Larmer, and uh, felt pretty good to know that I'm going to play a lot. All right. Uh, just before you scored the goal, you were waiting for Glenn Healy to come off. Now you get on the ice as the extra skater. Tell us about it. Well, I went, like I said, uh, hit, hit me right there, and I had the open net, and uh, good feeling. It was only 13 seconds ago in the, in, the, in the period, and it felt pretty good. How about the atmosphere of the team itself? You're, you're coming in uh, your first time as a New York Ranger, first time meeting some of these players. Did you feel comfortable, Stefan? Well, like I said, I was very nervous, but the guys really uh, put me uh, in the team, and I felt pretty good. And uh, they, they have uh, one of the best teams in the National, uh, National Hockey League, not for nothing. And uh, tonight, to prove again, they came back and uh, with a big hockey game. Are you excited about going to New York? I know that you'll be uh, living close to, but still battling with one of your best friends. Well, Pierre, me and Pierre Churjan, we grew up together. We're from the same hometown, but uh, we're going to have to battle against each other. But uh, it's only on the ice, and when, when's going to time to be... Uh, Go for dinner after the game, it's going to be fun. <laughs> and good to get that goal back in Calgary where you started your NHL career. Well, I played here for a year, and uh, I had a pretty good year, my rookie year, and uh, I have a lot of friends on the other side, but I didn't show up too much, hopefully. Steph, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on getting that tying goal. Thank you very much. All right, Stefan Matteau, who tied it up for the Rangers, the 4-4 final. Guests receive the American Express gift check. Think of it as a universal certificate that can be used to buy anything just about anywhere. Gift checks are available where American Express traveler's checks are sold. 4-4 is the final. Essa taken and had a hand on two of the goals. We'll be right back. Flames led three times, Rangers led once, and it ends up a 4-4 tie. Let's take a look at the goal of the game, brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural, proud to be your bud. Trying to draw a penalty. It's driven out of the zone. No, block. Take it and shoot. In front, Matteau. He scores! Stefan Matteau! His first as a New York Ranger with 13.9 seconds remaining. Wow! Unbelievable! An unbelievable finish for Stefan Matteau and the New York Rangers on the debut of Matteau, McTavish, Noonan, and Glenn Anderson. 
Some of our guests receive gifts from Bulova, make every minute count with timeless elegance and precision design. The Marine Star Collection from Bulova. Rangers move on to Edmonton. We'll be there tomorrow night at the Northlands Coliseum, 9.30 Eastern time on MSG1. It's the Rangers and the Edmonton Oilers. For John Davidson, producer Joe Whalen, director John Gallagher, this is Sam Rosen. So long, everyone.